I mean, well, it'd be cool. Is. I would like to like have like have that shit prepared. You know, like I think it's a really good idea to do like pull audio from them and do like a really organized thing. You know, if you guys have like. Yeah. Things yeah. you want to say or whatever. I don't know. I don't. People are tuning in. Chloe. <laughs> Someone do a voice for Chloe. She's got two viewers. <laughs> Dog who's today. I took her down. Normally, I have to sleep on the street, the bed of the older people. But today, I have to wonder very long. Went to the salon a couple weeks ago. You know, I like quails. Out there in the world. Can you hear us? Yeah. I cannot because of the other thing that's dead. Uh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I read too loud and clear. Kind of nice, it's like the old days, just radio. We didn't have all these people, but hmm. no, we're not, no. But MK Ultra, this MK Ultra.
Oh, that's a good song, too. Hello, everybody. And welcome to the Drug Town Radio Cure. That's a little sneak preview of next week's Drug Town Radio Cure. It's going to have some songwriting that's me. That's um, Beyonce arguing in the background. Um, I'm trying to write this proposal for this installation right now. So... What have you got so far? I've got a lot. But... I've also got to take apart our shared the production room. There's a lot of technicalities going on in the world right now. Unfortunately, we can't get on Facebook Live because of some computer stuff. But there has been a technological blessing during that um little segment you just listened to, which is, I've recorded in South Carolina with my friend Rick Floyd, that who's um, a music teacher, and that's one of his stu- new students that came over and has a lot to say. <laughs> and it's just full of, full of vitality, which is great. What, what are some have you of the guys things? ever heard this? Well, you just heard him, right? Yeah. Oh, and about like, how he likes to feel. Yeah, and if it's he can funny because I make all like I forget when I'm recording stuff, and I just record like all this stuff, and then I don't like a lot of times I don't title it. That's like my big like I think I got to change my organization. Although I kind of like because then yeah, it's like a fun mystery. It is really fun. Like yeah. Yeah, and you have to figure out what it was and what the context was and what was going on, and it is fun. And I guess I can use this show to organize some of that stuff too, because I have still a, a lot of mystery tapes that I not labeled, but I didn't bring those today. So, um, and you can't see on video, but we have some people here on the Radio Cure that you may know from a very popular show called Social Conditioning Live. It's a show that everybody's been talking about. lately. It's a lot of people. There's a lot of hype about about this show. Yeah. It's some kind of rump. And the lucky thing is is I haven't promoted this show at all because I've got all this other shit going on that I have to do and I still have to do. And... Uh, yeah, but still, I'm here. Well, people are going crazy. I'm here for the haters, I'm here for the lovers. There's I'm social here conditioning, for you. then there's this show, and now we have a wrap up show, so people are mad that we have three shows technically now. Well, technically, I don't know if that's technically correct. Technically, I who's we? Technically, who's we? Because it's one of us, with the royal we that's speaking right now, has you. a really stupid job. You're talking. At, I didn't say we. I'm talking about you. What's you so we. Royal You're royal the one we over there. <laughs> no, uh, not much. Not much. I mean, you can't even get a day off of work to come into this radio show social conditioning that you're a part of, allegedly. Technically. Like, Quit your your job is at if your job is at a grocery store and you get paid thirteen dollars an hour and, you and you're two like and you can't even bring home food when you don't even get food for lunch. Yeah. You and you Full exist to totally right. off bananas. Um, yeah, I do. I do live off bananas. They're like eleven I mean, cents, they're good for the you. First off, like, I live off bananas no matter where I live. The first thing is so there's no reason that. to you be. Eat a lot of it. To be afraid to ask for a day off for your creative career and things that you actually have, you know, some kind of 
mistake in that has some importance to you that might be worth at the very least $13 an hour of your time, you know? And if you're, if first off, don't be too afraid. If you're too afraid to ask for that day off, what's wrong with you? And if you ask and they don't give it to you, quit that job. Find another grocery store. Find another anything. I mean, ideally not a grocery store. Ideally not $13 no, an hour. If you, can, if you can take home, like, the kind of old food from a grocery store, you should absolutely work at a grocery store because then you don't have to. It's like you're getting paid extra. Like, you don't have to buy yeah. food. So, ever, really. So, I know. You know. I know. I wish I could argue that. Yeah. Um, no, work at Can you can you get to meet him every day? Sounds far away to me. Yeah. Do you need him? I need him. I do. I'm sure there's other grocery stores like that. I'm sure if you if you did it, no one would care. Yeah, think, I'm not really that like, into food that much. No. I, mean, I wish I did. It's important. Yeah. I mean, I mostly eat it. So wait, what, what happens? So what's the purpose you know where, for working at this grocery store? I don't know. I get so comfortable there because I can get away with just like reading a book all day, functioning on an hour of sleep, one hour. What kind of books have you been reading there? Uh, <laughs> that is more into uh, I've been reading the W. Kamal Bell book, and then, in me, and then I'm halfway through that Leonard Cohen thing. Oh yeah, how is it? I keep I. It's like yeah, I gotta keep going back to like. I think you have to like take it in as like looking at like a weird painting or something. Like try not to think too much. I love the writing though. Yeah. Is this a book uh, by Leonard Cohen? Yeah, it it's a called Beautiful Losers. Before he put out albums. Yes. And then see, I have poet. And sex in the reading her. Yeah, yeah. I love her. Yeah, well, I, I bought she that. She throw her pocketbooks into the Charles River Yam? No, I haven't gotten there. She oh. hasn't gotten too kooky yet. She's I read so about her good. in a book of suicide, and she was one of my favorites. She's so good. I saw this good um, poetry book at the, the, the Central Square thing um, that they're doing every month, I guess, now in that parking lot that we want to shoot a video in that has the paved, paved the trees inside the parking lot. Okay. These you, poor trees are like that. stuck in this parking lot that, and they're just like paved, oh, like there's cement on all sides of them. And then they just exist like, and I wonder for the trees if they're like, cause obviously when it was happening, they were probably like, Oh no, Lego! They're coming! They're gonna! There's no way we'll be safe! They're gonna pay me over! But now they're, they're like. Gonna but maybe, like, when they didn't have fruit, like, probably the trees watching that were like, what the fuck? Like, it's happening. I I'm, I'm Timber. I'm going in the fireplace. I picture one I'm tree saying the to the other tree, like, we're stuck here at the pavement. The other tree going, we were stuck anyway. We're not going to move. But the other tree still feels We like have alive. limbs, don't we? <laughs> Our leaves blow. It's the principle of the thing, to not be covered in concrete. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Because I'm like, now that the trees are in this state where they live in the parking lot and they're surrounded by concrete and, like, onto their onto the edges of their trunk, you know, if they're like, fuck this, I hate my life. Because they don't seem like that just from their, like, leafiness and stuff. They seem like they're going strong. So I wonder if, like, the reverse situation is like, oh, this is great. Because as a tree, like, I know that no one fucking else is going to grow here. Like, I've got this earth. You think they like that? All the earth mm-hmm. under here, got it to myself. Yeah. Because if the tree has room, it's going to grow a lot. You know, it's like that's death to a tree. It's like, it's like being born and, like, having, like, all these huge trees and shit around you. It's like, okay, well, I'm basically going to be, like, a little weakling and I'm going to die an early death. Unless, like, somebody comes and chops down all these trees and lets me grow, like, you know? 
There's no space for you. A tree grows in Central Square. Trees communicate through uh, mycelium, apparently. Uh, uh, you're mycelium. Mycelium. And scientists have done some research. And there's a little bit of tree communication that goes on through these un underground mycelium. It's like fungus. And they can, like, send... I'm listening. <laughs> I saw one. Now I'm, now I'm listening to this guy. Who's this guy? This is Chloe. He's wearing trees. Top. Yeah. But apparently they're like... <laughs> <they're certain laughs> right. Steve well, gave right. him the appropriate amount. I, I gave him the time of day. And then I moved on. This is something my grandmother would go on her range. She has this poem memorized since college. I am what, what poem is this? What is this? Oh. And she'd go... Oh, seven. Sure. Call her, go ahead. <laughs> Talking about trees. We hear you loud and clear. What do you how how else do you feel about trees, sir? Uh, like I mean, you say. talk. Uh, <laughs> right when we're trying to engage, he claims not to doze away with these people. He thinks about trees, I guess. But apparently, there are like mother trees that like send nutrients to other smaller trees through the, um, the mycelium. And I guess they can like send messages to them. Like if the big tree gets attacked by a certain parasite, if one tree gets attacked by a parasite, it can send a message through this like network of fungus to the other tree, and the other tree will start doing whatever immune response they have to do to like fend off the parasite before the parasite's even attacked. So there's like this underground tree connection thing. Totally. Um, the guy. Totally. It's kind of like the movie Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> what are you? Uh, what are you, 31 <laughs> over there? Is that what's going on? 80 <laughs> year old man. <laughs> I know. Still right. got a Nintendo. <laughs> 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 it was a bummer. <laughs> Let him in the studio. It's like spreading back to Popeyes. Our demographic. Charlie the Young Man jumped like Wasabo. <laughs> We're From young! The past. <laughs> anyway, so how. Wait, that I actually is how is it like Super, Super, Super Mario Brothers movie, which is like kind of a terrible movie. But there's all this. Well, I've heard that's like notorious for me. And they're saying, like, trust the fungus. Like, they really how, ran. Well, like, for some reason. In the Super Mario yeah, like in Super Mario, yeah. they, like, you know, you okay, can keep see, the mushroom and keep the power up. But they, like, really ran with that theme. That's like a weird thing. Really far in a weird way. Hold on to me. Now it's prevented from some education. Like, what about carnivorous plants? Like, you can make a movie about, like, Mario and the carnivorous plants in the tube. That goes, like... They made an emoji yeah. movie. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think anything uh, in Mario is real. Instead, they gave John Legend's on <laughs> Bob Hoskins' rocket. Yeah, right. Steve, what are you doing? Putting it out there. Right, yeah, I don't think... It's not real. I don't think it was based on science. <laughs> Is that the argument here? I'm like not really listening, but oh, I'm just saying an argument. It's a fact. A lot of people say Super Mario Brothers the movie. Mario. Okay, let's rewind the tape. Let's break that. Rewind that tape. Say Mario. Maybe it was a message to the kids. He's gonna tell them about Mario Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Y
Call her, go ahead. Because there's ahead, a senior, um, a senior group that's coming over there for a charity event, oh, actually. Your seniors. Oh. Um, <laughs> and there's not like a lot of stuff that the senior crowd would wear. So we like Tom asked me to ask some people if they might, you know, you know, just people that might have things in the size and style of the elderly. And also there's a clown troop that's kind of, there's a different charity event. I guess these people need clothes. I mean, I didn't. I thought Savers was everywhere, but and there's gonna be like a whole bunch of free applesauce and stuff, which is like pretty. It'll it'll be easy on your teeth. Yeah, and then there's also this other like pro bono like charity, like sort of like a secret, sort of like a friendship charity that's like help Stephen Andrex, and it part of it is like removing some items. From your life for your benefit. Steve, Such as all of your clothes. You think I have too many ideas in my life? It's just like, I don't know, items. it's like sometimes the community comes together and sees mm -hmm. a cause and a solution, and this is just like the faction, but it's, you know, I just, Tom told, asked me to ask you. Who I don't know that? if I was supposed to keep it a secret. I'm not sure. Who was that drunk guy who at 8 in the morning really didn't like your shirt? It was after like a couple of days of even like time right. or something. He said like, you've been wearing that shirt a lot. And Steve was like, hmm, maybe you're right. It was 8 in the morning and this guy got in my face about this shirt. I had wait, wait, Drunk wait. guy with a Ooh, really where? good eye. Where was and this? out of the blue. You're like, 8 in the morning? <laughs> some, you're oh, no, no, no. It was not 8 in the morning. Okay, it was, nine, it was like, for it was the like radio, 10 yeah. No, it was 8 for the radio. There was, there was a gentleman was seven. who, you know, hates technology. So I guess I can talk about it. Well, I like him as a person. Oh. He sells books. However, he did show up to the one at the Blue Gallery, really wasted at 10.30 in the morning, and proceeded to criticize my wardrobe <laughs> and tell me to wash and launder my clothes more often. Oh, <laughs> what did he yeah. Well, I mean, that yeah. shirt was good. Which was, I mean, the, the, whole, the whole thing is like, name was John it's, the it's such a crazy thing to say when you're like, Wasted at ten thirty in the morning, like five thirty. You know, yeah. you gotta wash your clothes. You gotta get your life here. together, sir. You gotta, like, you, gotta <laughs> you know, he can't wear this. How many times have you been wearing that shirt? <laughs> People really come down on you about the whole shirt. Yeah, it bothers it me. It was almost your yeah, yeah. It's like so preposterous and it's hard to deal with. You know? It takes you by surprise. Actually, who are these who like my clothes? People like the shirts, especially. I, yeah, I don't know. It's like very weird the emotions that you evoke in people sometimes. Because, like, they can be, they're all like very intense emotions, I think. Like, they're either like very intense emotions of just like hate, like based on nothing. But never love. Or sometimes, yeah, like love and trust, you know? Like, sometimes he gets like, like people. Like, um, the cosmic newsman, like, P Peter Valentine, who, like, never talks to anybody, but he, like, Peter found Thomas a friend an immediately yeah. in, in Steve and proceeded to teach him the ways of, of the electromagnetic martial arts, which usually you have to pay $400 to, oh, to teach him. Oh, oh. But he was getting free lessons, like, right away. He Not right getting, away. He, he, he had getting getting good taught. conversations. He was That's getting invited fun. into his house. Which I think was tame. <laughs> Put into a lemonade bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and he did drink it because he's polite. Yes. And you yeah. need to pretend this is good. What did he say? It was lemonade disguised as tang? Well, he just he just said it was tonic. This yeah, is some good tonic. Uh, All the stuff. Yeah. yeah. The first time I made. Um. But yeah. yeah. I mean, but then I like you get people who are just stuff. like hate you. Like, Who are some of those people? I don't know. Like, uh, they're they're out there. You always you say it's because you look like the guy from Twin Peaks with the ponytail. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Leo. Yeah. Yeah. Leo. Yeah. That's true. I do think yeah, there is this polarized effect where like certain people upon like, first impression, you know, like they see me at the like bar, like 
they see the hair and they're either like, oh, this reminds me of my, my uncle who plays the banjo. <laughs> my people. Or, or, my people. or they're like, that Batman Uber dumb. is Leo Twin Peaks. He's a sociopath. But then they were so mean to Leo, you were like, well, no. Yeah. Hasn't yeah. learned enough. I mean, I don't know, that may not be true. That's just a, that was a theory I came up with based on every now and again when I would go into public and, and hang out with, you know, you know, new people or, or <laughs> squares I or hate new normies people. or whatever you want to call them. And I, I would, you know, encounter these polarized reactions to me. Like, just, you know, looks in your eyes. Oh. And so I came up with that theory. Is this Hero's wife on the phone? What's that there? I thought Tonic was soda. What was he medicating you for, Steve? <laughs> Possibly the electromagnetic illness that affects all of us in this insane society. <laughs> Maybe the medicating of the no. artists in the city of Cambridge. What was he? Oh. Like disease that they but I don't know if that's conclusive that that was actually what's going on. I'm, I actually don't know anything about it. I just remember. We had a caller who was a lot of it. Maybe it wasn't Zika virus. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> additional callers, if you want to call in, we will take your call. I missed a lot of calls on our last show. And uh, let's see if I miss them again. You can call in at uh, 617-903-7464. If you've got something to say about tonics, call in now. Well, get to it. Okay. Turkish bread. Sorry about that. That was just, we have a, I mean, that sounds we actually good. have a chef in the studio today. Uh, he's not sure about where the kitchen he's is. He's nervous. He's kind of been lying to him about there being a kitchen. So I'm sorry, you just had to come in for a minute. And, and he's not gonna chill, tell me so. about his bread. I don't know why I'm trying to keep him here. I just am. Well, if he's come all this way. Yeah, he seems authentic, doesn't just he? Just let him talk. I just know if he stays, if he just. What's his name? Hangs out long enough, I'll find a use for him. Um, I think it's Jeppio. Jeppio! You can come back for a minute. If you just... Here, come up to the mic, Jeppy. Oh. You have more to say about bread? Oh. Okay. Wait, let's see Bob. You don't say it. Okay, well, <laughs> well, it's, that's we're true. not waking up right now, Bob. All right, all right. Well, no, you got a good point, Best, you know, about um, waking up to fresh bread. It hasn't happened to me, but I can only imagine. So, I if this is a breakfast of fresh bread, food, the smell of fresh bread would be nice. Yeah, if only we had a kitchen here for him. Although, I don't know, he might be doing something with Flint in the hallway. Okay, yeah, Best, you just go out there for a minute. No, no lighting fires in this place. There's, there can be no. Sparking of anything. There, we're like we're the most flammable people I know. With like all and I know people. Sounds have. like a real compliment to me. <laughs> <laughs> we're not just flammable. We're not flammable. Is Peter Valentine the cosmic moose um, against technology? Yeah, he hates it. Uh, he told me he told me one time that if I brought a robot around him, he would keep hitting me. Well, he doesn't like you, does he? <laughs> No, he's he's very nice to me. Oh, I thought he doesn't like winners. No, well, I thought that, and then okay, so I gave him. I thought that, and then I gave him like a key to Steve's house, and he had it like on the end. I saw him walking around with it, and Steve told him. Well, so Steve, sorry, this is a dumb story, but Steve told him that it was my idea to give him a key, and so. It, he, I saw him walking around with it on it like this long gold keychain that had like a little um, thing on the end of it that had like purple glitter 
and, and water or whatever in it, and he just looked so happy, and he was like, it was like a key to the city. We should all he give just him like, keys. And then ever since then, he's been teaching me electromagnetic martial arts and talking to me about his daily goings on, um, saving the safety of the trees and things like that. So we're, we're good friends, but... I like you guys are more pro robot. Yeah, no, he really, he like, he met here. told me, like, you know, if you bring a robot around, I'm going to hit you. Make it be worth it. And I'm glad, I'm glad he, like, let me know before I did it. Communication is important. Yeah. Why can't you just hit the robot? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, okay. Hold on. Did you say electromagnetic energy? Martial arts, yeah. Like then I would. Um, There's a level. Electromagnetic. No. Oh. No, I can't. Nope, I'm not gonna believe it. Oh. Can it or not? No. Oh, well, I want some. What's the number? Whoa. Ah, oh. I actually really like this style of video animation. Well, because they kind of talk to you a little bit. Yeah. He's taking his time. You could do <laughs> Steve, did you really like Mr. Roger? Roger? I enjoyed Mr. Roger. I can see you. I mean, adopting I, I, what's that? more than I enjoyed, you know, that train. Oh, yeah. That they drive into the other world. That would be with, Thomas uh, Tank and King. Well, no, there was a train on Mr. Rogers, too. Oh, yeah, the, the train. train made, like, what? go out of Mr. Rogers' house into the land of make believe. That's true. And well, that was a part of Mr. Rogers and the characters. I did also enjoy Thomas the Tank Engine. Okay. Ah. That was a good show. George Carlin was on that. I know. Hey Kyle, mm -hmm. did you did you, you bring your feelings journal with you? Oh, I think it might be waiting out in the lobby. And I think I'm I think I missed a page when I read it to you guys last night. Oh. oh there's, there's more feelings. I look forward to it. I pulse and current. Every now and again I like you hear that pulse and current? Yeah, I can. I saw one. I like this guy. <laughs> this guy is alright. Seems about your age. <laughs> Steve watched Thomas the Tank in the back and he was 53. But it just came on. Oh. Zen Brad's turn. Chloe's. Get fucking bored. Flash drive, dude. Language in front of Chloe. We've got. I old. think Mariah's right. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't do too many. I did kick a door. One time, of like during my the last dark day, I had. You mean when you're angry, you don't break things even. Well, I mean it's happening around me for right. some reason. Even though I was on the phone when Tyrone threw something. At a June But now theater. Herb's throwing things, and the and he's also like coming and leaning in and like. Doing whatever thing that he's trying to work on with the computer, yeah. and then so like it's an interesting thing. I mean, Herb has like super like anxiety, rage, like misplaced yeah. behavioral issues. Yeah, I remember that, that like annoy me. Yeah, the all first the time. time I'm like, oh my god, he's had it meltdown and then like when you get to know him you're like this again and i wonder if it's more if it's more or less in front of people you know like usually like, is it a performance for people or is it something that you would want to hide because, i you know you need to be doing it you don't know the way. yeah like what would you be doing with you yeah. alone like, John, like, sometimes, like, I've definitely hit things and, like, punched the sidewalk before, not for a long time, but, you know, like, I've been very... Isn't, isn't punch the sidewalk with the phrase that some people use? 
So wait, you would get out of your knees and put your fist against the side. So we're gonna get out. Oh, go pound dirt. Pound dirt. Go pound dirt. Go pound dirt. Go pound dirt. So you would literally go on the cement and put your fist. Not yeah, not on the regular. So did you go? Oh. I mean, I didn't go ow because I was angry, but I definitely cut my hands up and bled so a lot. Oh. And it was because of like an interaction, you know. But I did it alone in a, you know, rageful, masochistic way. I don't like breaking things. A lot of people, a lot of dudes have a whole thing with breaking things. Like when me and Rico Rob drove to um, Texas and recorded a demo at um, our friend's place over there, who was like living above this studio and working at the refrigerator factory across the street. But like three people worked up, and one of them ate squirrel. And like, but they build the um, refrigerators that like Dairy Queen and stuff uses. So like this random guy in Bastrop, Texas, is like a millionaire because he builds these refrigerator units. So he like hired our friend to um, to work at the factory, and like because he had some like engineering experience or whatever, let him like use the studio and live in this little apartment above it and so like he would go to work every day and we were there for like a couple of days recording or whatever and it was like right across the street like it was basically like a compound in the middle of nowhere and like the sound of this place it's cool it was really cool it's like a it and like if you're recording it's a great place to go and like record like if you really had a full like album or something. I wonder if he's still there. Our Sweet. friend's name it's is like Tim Garza. It's a refrigerator Garza. fabrication facility, and your friend just works there. Making fridges. Yeah. Does he break the fridges? There? Yeah. Where's no, the part? No. So like, okay. Uh, so off, he would go over to work, and fun. like it's like I don't know what goes on at his work at the refrigeration factory, but like me and Repo Rob are just like you know sleeping, and then like I'm doing art and stuff or whatever, hang out in his apartment tiny apartment but so one day he came back from his job across the street and he had like this keyboard and he just like smashed the like entire keyboard into like a million pieces and just took like yeah, it total was, rage. It should be a joyful thing to bring. It would just throw, throw like glass bottles and stuff. I love doing that. I love it. And the, um, the Redemption Center. Do, you know, that was going to be. I have a new. Stuff. I have a segment idea for the show that kind of incorporates that. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. Favorite, when but, I pretended to go to college, um, we're, we're shooting things. When things my friend Rachel class. would get all Adderall up, I, my favorite thing was to convince her to go. Um, steel plates from the cafeteria because it was a giant brick wall in their dorm and I just loved watching I just, it was, every time they did I didn't even have to do anything just because I love breaking things no matter what and I'd bet her just, please get some plates and she'd steal these stacks of plates and I was like a child watching and we were the only ones who thought it was funny but it was just great throwing a plate and bricks inside and they would never clean them up they'd leave them there they'd start huge arguments but when I was in high school, I could ever have. we used to go to the Half Price Books dumpster, which is a great place to find extra books. I mean, most of them aren't very good books. They're in a dumpster, but they're half price. Well, I mean, I always thought it'd be interesting to try to sell those books back to Half Price Books. Like, I don't know why we never did that. You just see what happens. Oh, and for some reason, I was picturing a dumpster and book. sell books for half off. And is, there, is that a thing that exists in New England? Half priced books, the store. <laughs> it's just like literally a store. It's not a that. hard concept to grasp. So. <laughs> you see, they sell the books roughly half. Price. I think anyway, they, they throw away a lot of books, so you can just drive up to their dumpster at some of these malls, grab a bunch of books, throw them in your car, drive around, and hook them out the window, or go to your friend's house and like you know write some words in the books and their wall on the. You know, 
I used to like giving stuff like that to the right, old food operators. Yeah, if you want, you can make books. Yeah! And then you tie, then you rip like, up the pages and tie them to a blade of grass. What, everything's that have a reason? You can eat this garden. I just don't. I'm just wondering what that. Well, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just a, a, a peculiar object. It's an, it's an artifact, it's a waste of capitalism. <laughs> you can pull it out of a dumpster and you can have fun with it, but throwing it in stuff or making words out of it. It's like, a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a bunch of paper filled with words. I know what a book You turn is. into a big ah. word. And then. Or words. <laughs> words within words. I yeah. Steve's I mean, just getting I weirder let, and weirder. I fuck with books. Me, so. Believe me. I get. I could take all the books that there is to take. And I refuse the Kindle. Have you gone? Have you read that yet? Uh, that's I got. I'm in the middle of so many. That's gonna require. I can't be in the middle of other books when dying. Wait, have you read Dianetics? Yeah. I like gotta it. start on that. I just started reading it. Is that the same time? Yeah, that's yeah. That's Hubbard's book. Yeah. How is it? Yeah, you said it's you got a big. good chunk of the way. It's I good. Always, it's I good. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll pass yeah. it around. Yeah. I asked for it. I asked for it for my parents from for Christmas one year. And they ordered it. Then <laughs> were they worried? And, so, about and then I, no, I mean, like, <laughs> no, that's how I came to be. Okay. So you <laughs> didn't worry. All right. <laughs> they how maybe, odd they maybe should have, but um, yeah. So on so Christmas Day or whatever, I unwrapped this gift that like looked like a book. And I opened it up, and it was the Holy Bi- the Mormon huh. Holy Bible. Did they were they <laughs> like? I think that's what she wanted. They were like, we ordered Dianetics from Amazon, but it hasn't come yet. <laughs> <laughs> so they gave me that. Did you as try and get into it, or was it the worst Christmas you ever had? What the Bible? The Mormon Bible. Did you make the best of your? I, if you never wanted. No, I'm not ready for Have you ever read Wait, this? this I've been reading excerpts of the Quran that I got in Istanbul. I think she'd be a little girl. That's kind of interesting, but it's like there's so much. It's not, like, sensical. I mean, I do want to read the Bible, but it's, like, it's really hard to follow. You know, Dianetics is, like, I a used- system of belief, and it's very, like, laid out, and you can follow it. You know, it's at least a... Theory. Remember, my dad had the same I, did, I really Bible didn't get far. We were all like, but I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna read the whole thing. I used to read, um, because my dad had the Satanic Bible when we were little, and since my mom's all like trained to be afraid of that stuff, even though she's just kind of religious because her mom is, and she's not really that into it. And she's probably listening. So then, like the Satanic Bible, would have to like hide in the closet. It would always be there that I would start to get into it. That's perfect, though. Like, you know, in an ideal world, that's where the Satanic Bible should be. Yeah. Hidden under a staircase in a 500 year old church. <laughs> and, and I remember this goth. Gathering dust and it. So, yeah. Like, in high school, like, the goth kids. All the goth kids were, like, two years younger for some reason. And this one kid, Jimmy, like, I don't know, I let it slip that I have the Satanic Bible. And he thought it was the coolest guy. And he'd always ask for it. And then one day, um, I was with my dad came in to like see me in the jazz band or something, and then so this little kid comes up to my dad, goes, "Are you the guy with the Satanic Bible? Can I please borrow it?" And he was so like he likes to act. He doesn't want anyone to know there's anything weird about it. You'll see on my Instagram. When I was a kid, there was a store that I used to go to and buy comic books and stuff. It was called Sports Legends. It was run by this guy whose name was Butch, like an older guy named Butch. Older than you. Bro, he said funny stuff. I left my helmet for my bike in there once, and he's like, don't forget your brain, Bucket. He says stuff like that. I remember but, Butch. Like, one time I was in there, and there was a kid who wanted to buy a Pog Slammer, you know, like, it's like a big piece of metal. That I remember Yeah, no, my, my brother had one that had a scorpion in it. A real yeah, but scorpion. He, he wanted to what? buy a Pog Slammer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I saw that. A real scorpion? A real yeah. scorpion, yeah. Oh. It wasn't a lot. It was like crystallized. Crystallized pumps and dot But to complete the story, the kid wanted to buy. The kid wanted to buy a pod slammer with a yin yang on it, and his mom was like not sure about it. 
Ning nang. Ning nang, hey doll file. Nah, uh uh. She gave him the ning nang. I don't want you talking around. Oh, slow, you're getting slow, slow. you're saying. She didn't sound like that. I ain't getting you no poggy pocket. Is that the voice you want well, to You do math. She's you like do a, math when you get home. Well, he's like, is it morning? You I did like your you, equation. You created a character for this woman that is not quite. Nice. I don't want you hitting <laughs> no cardboard square. See, you got to exaggerate for radio. No, what That's she a actually very said. accurate. Them things is dangerous, Adolfo. <laughs> I don't want accurate? you messing <laughs> with that. Adolfo. <laughs> what she really said. You know what wrong with Pog? <laughs> Frog. And they're <laughs> eating them for dinner tonight. Frog leg. Adolfo. Adolfo, what is three plus three? I'll tell you what. You know I never learned math and I need you. Now I will tell you the real thing. We'll be right say. back. I don't want none of that. It's a stupid guy. Cut his mic. Cut his mic off. Okay, what'd she say? It's a right. trap. <laughs> she said. I'll cut okay. you a circle out of a piece of cardboard. I'll she tie said, you and chew on that. I'm stupid. You little dummy. She said. And stop <laughs> hanging out with that old man with the ponytail. That, uh, that on Derek that he says he's fine. He, he uh, says he's a boy, but he looks like an old geezer. <laughs> was, I guess we'll never know. We'll be right now, basically what she said. His was, clothes are funny looking. <laughs> He won't change those. Like so here's cool. what happened. We're moving. <laughs> we're moving, Adolfo. Uh, you mean off? More like <laughs> off, Derek. Yeah, I'm really curious. So anyway, basically what she said was like, well, I don't know, Timmy. It looks kind of like a devil symbol to me. It looks like a kind of like a satanic. It's the devil, Adolfo! <laughs> no! This game is not a game! <laughs> this game will drop your phone! This game is It's just a, it's an oriental symbol of a family. Oriental? Oriental? What are you, some kind of racist? Woo! I don't want you hanging out with racist <laughs> devil children at all, uh, Get away from that racist old man. Hang out with that for her, but at least he has an arm on him. It's uh, <laughs> black side. <laughs> black? Yeah. So, that's how that went down. Which was interesting because uh, no wonder you had. I just it's just pretty loud really to me that that whole satanic panic thing is still a little bit of a deal. I, I missed those days. Oh yeah, there was. Like, I read a book about they, like, that. They like they were like molesting yeah. or yeah. having yeah. the corner yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 They do. Yeah, it doesn't work. Like matter. remember when Marilyn Manson was scary? Like I wish you could. You know. can't. People don't even care about Satan anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Now that metal yeah. is such so a big thing. Because my mom would be terrified of the Satanic yeah. Bible. I'd read her a passage from the real Bible and the Satanic Bible and ask her what the difference is. They were both just so boring. Like, the Satanic Bible was trying to write in that same... Like, oh, my God. It's like one of those things you go into. Like, all right, I'm going to give it my full attention. I'm going to take it in now. And then, like, three sentences you're thinking Yeah, it's like else. the blood of the sheep. And then you're like, oh, my God. Now it's like... It's, and everything is like a ten... Page um, addendum at the end, whatever they call that citation. What yes. the fuck is that called? Have you guys seen any yeah, of this documentary this stuff with the guy who wrote that though? Oh, Isn't about that Anton LaVey? Yeah, like he looked like Hamill. He's kind of a silly guy. He reminds me of my dad. Yeah. He used to play the client. He loved the Lone Ranger. The honor of the <laughs> my dad also loved the Lone Ranger. Of this <laughs> 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 so importantly, is to cut anyway. the penis. And he got, um... Cut the penis. <laughs> Elizabeth Ryan. Or no, who, Jane Mansfield. Free the penis. And free Jane Yeah, Mansfield. but I mean, like, you can, there's, like, a movie called Satanist, The Devil's Mask, from the 60s, and they're all Church of Satan things. Yeah, it's just kind of... It's kind of dorky. Really <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, They've got yeah. a snake. We're like, doing a little bit of orgy, maybe, yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Other... So really... I'm distracted by the coinskin wall and ideas. I, I'm trying to listen to Steve, and all I'm thinking is I don't know. I don't know. People are saying. Yeah. <laughs> People I know you can use them for uh, stem cell growth. People are so smart. I don't know why they just don't pull out the babies and go like, oh, they got this whole cover on, and let's like, just cut the whole thing off. Yeah, all the skin. Cut our whole skin off, and let <laughs> yeah. us be the fruits that we were meant to be. 
We're yeah. having in our world. We don't have to worry about it acne. It must be released. Wouldn't that be great? What if we're like a whole new our whole like skin. animal if you just remove the skin? All the skin. Like a kiwi. Consider it all for skin. I do. <laughs> and that's why I don't touch people. <laughs> Think about Actually that. a condition. I am very scared. I should joke. I have it. <laughs> when, called, I, when I look out at you people. It's called everything's a force. <laughs> <laughs> to me, a life in recall. Oh, right. I think there was like some kind of weird like thing in, in the Jewish culture. Like the, um, that the it was like a coming. person that was made out of horse skin or something. It's wow. like, uh, <laughs> That maybe like sounds like something you made up now. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I the golem was made of mud. <laughs> Pretty sure it was foreskin. I was gonna say like, mud? Just, like that's a, you're on our new game like show, a, mud or foreskins. Like the golem's I, weird brother is made of foreskins. You know? Call in if it's mud or foreskins. Mud or foreskins. Question we wanted to know. Yeah, I I saw that thing. It's definitely mud. There's no way it's foreskin. Steve's right on the money. He knows what he's talking about. You guys have been interrupted him. He knows a lot. It was mud. <laughs> anyway, love your show. Goodbye. Thank you, brother. I feel very vindicated now. I just want to say, I think it is definitely mud. I, oh, hello. I'd, I'd like to time. read about the golem. Back last time, was an idiot, and he doesn't know anything about hard skins because it was rusted ah. away. The golem was rusted away from him before, he even, There's a hello. before he even learned to... I'm trying to make a movie, but why would you let me even get a word? Why did you talk about foreskins if you never even had one? Oh, you're the color. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steve. 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 I don't know, because you don't get mad and you just keep like going. Like a bassy, I hear a and background you just keep, you know, noise. Like yeah, it's like you're the bass and you're doing a the guitar solo over it. I know what to do because I'm a songwriter. Well, the thing is, you're just singing. Here, you guys, can you guys talk right over me and I'll be Steve. You need a new voice, Steve. Yeah. Right here, I'll be Steve and you just interrupt. So the interesting thing about it, so it's kind of, um... Anyway, fuck you, I want to talk about foreskins. Well, the thing about mailboxes is they weren't really around in the 50s. They disappeared for a year, and they came back again. Yeah, I can see what you mean. It might just be a matter of like frequencies. Yeah, that's what it is. It's frequencies. I feel like we with the microphone. I can project better when I'm not on. Yeah. yeah. Is that how you feel? <laughs> I haven't heard it. Are you projecting a lot? Is this because of your new um, career as a lecturer for tiny children? Maybe. But even that, I don't know if I do it very well. Because <laughs> I don't know when you project. Hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, I've heard you go, hmm, and like variations of that. Many, many, like, hmm. you know. On the contrary. Backtrack. I'm like, like that you know. The kids that you're that's not a like real the, teacher that's, and I anti, hate you. that's not a projection. You know? That's like the opposite of projecting. But it's at the same time heard. True. But I wonder, True. like, when you just said that, I feel that I can project more without a microphone. Where did you, like, where did your mental image of yourself go where you were, like, standing and projecting? Yeah, I was imagining myself uh, up on a balcony in front of a crowd. Like an office. Okay. Thousands. So it's like a potential you know, like thing. Okay. Like so it's you like, see, that's, I think that's, a, it's not like something that you have done or a situation you have been in, but it's the idea that you would project better without a microphone. Well, no, it's something about, you know, you put on the you put on the headphones, you're talking into a microphone, you're processing the way that your voice is going through that microphone. Oh, you're over the sink. And then you talk to the computer system, you hear it in your headphones. It's just different from talking to another person. I know, when we're on a microphone when you're talking like this. You know what I mean? 
True. It's a whole different thing. So, Jarva, what does he sound like off mic when he's not on the radio? <laughs> do an impression of Steve <laughs> people at home don't know. <laughs> or he's really boisterous and singing. Well, no, I mean, it's not necessarily a matter of... Well, yeah, he, he does sing and whistles a lot. Hmm. <laughs> I thought you were going to do something. Hmm. <laughs> That's like Steve looking at a house burning down, like, we should do, what should we do? Hmm. <laughs> One thing we could do would be mm-hmm. to get a giant hose full of water and spray mm-hmm. the dang thing into like, just a bunch of... Mm-hmm. But then again, I mean, it's, it's just going to burn down. That's interesting when you think that. I feel like I do pretty well under pressure. <laughs> yeah, man, probably, but I don't, I don't know if I've seen you under pressure. You do. You're cool, you're calm, and you're collected. Yeah. And I feel like you are, her, you know. What's it, what is the last I don't know. situation? I can't I imagine. We should make you play a, like a bombastic a character. We should give you, you know what helps is like an alter ego. Like when I was Alfredo's mom, you know, like I just Who's saw wait, wait, Alfredo's yeah, mom. I mean, like when I heard Alfredo's You're mom like, calling I in, I was like, oh, I can relate to her on some level. Like, and I feel like maybe I could like, okay, when I saw Kim Basinger, if you say that like that, um, in the movie That's Eight true. Mile, yes, which I've never seen the whole Eight Mile, but I was at my friend Monica's house and we were it was on TV and we were watching part of it and like the part where she like like is like freaking out or something at Eminem in their trailer or something and I was just like I could do that. I was like you know it's like at a certain point I could do like yeah I could. You know, like, I could, it's, like, the life experience and shit that I've gone through or whatever, like, I feel yelling like I can, huh? Makes, it's made you feel that well, yelling at you? No, just, get, I just, like, like able, that. like, to, um, become that kind of character. What made you, know? you pick the Joe Lisa voice? Was that voice up to you in the movie The Freak Show? How uh, much free? How much did you get to design that character yourself? And could you please do the voice for us? <laughs> well, we don't. Well, I feel like I need like Jaleesa's whole outfit and everything to get into Jaleesa. Ooh, but I think you're, you, oh, you're I a mess now. Try. I think you can summon it up. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Do it! Pit, the phones are lighting up. Wow. <laughs> Here it comes! I wish we had a crowd coming through. She's gonna do it! Wow. She's getting there! Wow. Chloe, you wanna hear it? What thing about me is that I'm like, I'm kind of like, I know that like, I'm kind of like, I'm like, like, I'm like a fictional kind of character of, like, I know that I am my own person, but at the same time, Wait. I also, like, Where did Jay that go? I'm, like, a projection, like, a fictional thing that, like, lives in Tyron Jones' mind. Do the line about how you don't believe in love, that people yeah. really like that one. Do you think that Tyron imagined the character I... that's the voice? Oh, uh, well, the thing is that Tyron's got a way of doing that. Doing ladies' voices and like when he does the ladies' voices, like he's like, okay, so you'll be like, I'm kind of like, I'm trying, I'll never hurt I'll you. I'll be drinking, I'll be drinking, and like, you know, I'll get with you. It's so like, it's like, how do you do this seriously? Like, and I'm like, okay, I want to be like gothic and like not into. It in the way that T expects or is asked, you know? It's like, how do I make this good? And so, did you ever know someone who is gothic who had a sort of nasally voice like that? Uh, voice like, yeah. So, you do love nasal yeah. voices, we're kind of weather. But he seems a little overweight. <laughs> Something like that. Well, I just think that, you know. Yours is better. When you're 
Oh, now she's really becoming chilly. So before it was a chill. So now you're and she's the goth wife. Like maybe people don't expect you to be a different way. Maybe they think that you're not a real person. As that there's that you gotta act a certain way or sound a certain way or like a certain way. And so Lisa Mike, breaks down I those barriers. Quickly ask in a crossover moment. What okay. happened to True God? Um, so I know I did I did want to bring that up because I was one like see these things I don't know like to me I went on tour True God came on the radio and I'm assuming you guys destroyed the relationship just like <laughs> with know. another I show. <laughs> I love I don't I don't know and I've been meaning to ask about it, but I was gonna like Did you, you know bring it up in an accusatory way because I think that's when fine. you were out of town you came up? Yeah. So I feel kind of like responsible in my absence without knowing any details other than like I don't, and I don't even know if I haven't heard that because I've listened to all the shows where I wasn't from when I was gone. I don't think that that show is up as a podcast. I'm not sure. It's up. It is. Yeah, it's a Facebook live video. I huh. liked him a lot. You know what? I mean, I kind of like have like a re- a regret about him because I want I wanted to he um you remember when we met him and he was like doing a song and dance and like shifting at the midway. And it was really great, and I liked it a lot because it was like really weird, you know. It was weird and it was cool, and and I and it seemed like he was having a good time doing it, and like he liked doing it. And then, like I talked to him about it later, and he was like, he said something like, "Oh, I don't do that anymore because I did that one time at a different place, and some guy told me that it was the gayest thing that he ever saw." Which is like stupid. It's like a dumb reason not to do Very something. Very New England insult. And yeah. yeah, and it's like, like so some weird guy who like, you know, probably has all of these like wigs in his closet that he uses to impersonate his mother on the weekends. And anyway. like is calling you gay for doing something that you like doing because he's too scared to. You know, like I I felt like. I, what I wanted to do was just like ha, like make him <laughs> uh, have telephone conversations with like other guys that I I know who like do things that people call gay for no reason. You know, it's kind of surprising to me that a grown man would call him a grown man uh, gay. I, I didn't know people yeah. don't call each other gay. It so I heard certain other like, shows have been like that was a kind of thing. Still like, like thing, you know, when you're like well, well, to like, I know. somebody's trying to break your spirit and just you they say, like, come after you. Or like oh, shame you in front of women because like they're jealous yeah. and like they Because they're insecure, it. they want to take you down a notch, you know, they want to try to call you a faggot and beat you up and all that shit. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think so. it's also said... But it's been a long time. Yeah. 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 I mean, it exists in a lot of, like, contexts and there's like a more casual, less sinister context where it exists Oh yeah, I'm not saying it's I do remember on the Four Loco show you were calling Tyrone a I, I quote know. black faggot ass. Why? What? <laughs> yeah, he said, "Shut up, you black." And I'm like, no, I was, I was like the only one that heard that. And I'm like, there's no, I mean, we don't even there for like six hours. Like, oh well, my we don't god! Talk to on it. But it was, was that like was that towards the end? But yeah, but it just wow. sound. It doesn't sound like when you call me KKK and like when you say midget. Like you know, I don't know when you say it, things it doesn't. Well, I say it with love. I feel like you've wanted to say it like for years. <laughs> I was probably like, yeah. I was probably turned up <laughs> on know. that logo, and I was it like, so like, "Oh, shut up, you black faggot!" That's so funny because <laughs> I he didn't even yeah, he that, he wouldn't wink an eye at that he because sleep. he can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're gonna post <laughs> that footage of that so you can understand. <laughs> Maybe someone can break it down and explain. Have now, they have a joke about Tyrone's are dead, and he can't wink, so it's a reference they do a lot <laughs> to the winking and play the video. 
Because <laughs> normally, on a normal day, I would either say that I can see his pussy or yeah. call him a lesbian. Right. That's true. You do say that. Too. You know? Well, like, I would never so. call... Like, well, you your pussy it would be you. weird for me to say faggot ass to him, but I can see how in my poor loco, <laughs> loco mind... That would be extra funny. Well, to me. And I made the best commercial of you um, ranting about Coca Cola on the way out. What was I so upset about? I have to watch it. More, it was more joyful, but like, you're going, <laughs> Coca Cola? Oh, you know what? I, oh, no, it's not on my phone. It's a picture here. You poison America, so did I. At least I was more honest about it. I, but, and then you go out the window, you got the door. <laughs> I should, what'd you say, window? You jump out the window, then Herb's there. You go, you fucked. Up, Herb. You fucked up. And he goes, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, dude? You know. Call your mom and tell her and ask her how you fucked up. Can't wait to see her tomorrow and I'll see you then. Bye. She also threw her phone at my face. <laughs> <laughs> but I like how it Because I like to remind you, like, we're going to the 4th of July thing. And can't wait to meet her. Can I, uh, can I quick divert us for one second? Yeah. What is this? I, I, said, that to, I said that to his mom, too. Is this said your I was like, I don't want to talk about you your, I don't want to talk badly about your son right oh, now. Not to break so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> But I've heard uh, this music. Is that thing done yet? Yeah, so, um, oh, uh, the music? It was like really dramatic. Um, is it still playing? No, the thing. Is it the dynamic? It may just stop. Okay. Is it, it's um, narcissistic Wait. or demonic? There it is. It's that. It's, it's, it's something titled Narcissistic or Demonic. Is this spiritual warfare? A spiritual I'll perspective wow. video. Well, I was about to get so into. To yeah, I think yeah. you guys are hacking the same uh, uh, sound <laughs> soundscape artists oh, yeah, out there. Like, but probably just, benefiting I, off yeah, the same person. Yeah, like, yeah, I tried to explain. Um, check it. Check what? The merge. Oh, I don't know how. Anyway, sorry about that. I totally I my totally mom. Derailed it. That's yeah. okay. We're going into it. Tell the thing about your mom, and then okay. we'll go into. Well, no, it relates to Mariah because I was trying to explain everything to my mom today that's been going on with her show. And and what show was that? Because you don't show up to any show. <laughs> I know that, that show. Back to circling back. I feel like to the royal we uh, of JKK, who doesn't, who had now has three shows oh, according to his statement, <laughs> even though. He I, attends none of them. I know, but when I do, I participate I, more than Tyron <laughs> Jones, which I'm kind of do the makeup for. But anyway, so <laughs> okay. I'm trying to explain what was Throw going on. Throw you want under the bus. If you're not right, well, on the bus, you're not on the bus. And you, we're checking who's I'm, there and who is I'm still throwing people under. So yeah, I was explaining um, just the stuff going on with some show, and I don't know how Mariah came up. And then I said, like, and Mariah and Jennifer kind of got into it on the last show, and I was going to explain the whole thing about it, she just goes in and screams, and my mom goes, you know, the thing is, she, she loves that screaming. Yeah, my mom goes, like, I know. No, you know, the thing is, is that it's so hard for an adult to feel that joy without any drugs or alcohol, and people, and my mom's never met Mariah, I mean, when people see Mariah, I think they get very jealous that she's just so positive, and just so childlike, and that's, and you gotta be nice to her. <laughs> Very motherly, and and sure, I mean that that could be, you know, true in some part. Like yeah. I, I I don't like, I love Mariah for being Mariah. I mean, I don't, don't want to punish her for being Mariah or make her be another yeah, way. I just so. you know. Oh, we gotta listen to Wayne so. I think that when you're, I think that when you're centered so wholly on doing, being this um, psychic guru type person and having, putting it, putting this positive, positivity message out there and like, trying to focus your identity on that message and and like having and having this joyful experience in the universe at all times 
it actually probably in some ways makes it difficult to like be open and deal with your issues of where mm -hmm. you're not, you know, having the best time or where you have conflict and you have feelings that aren't, you know, positive and, and abundant in the for you know, I, what I, it's like, it's, it's all part of things and you do have to be open with others and with yourself, but you also have to be like considerate of other people. I think that's like a part of being a positive force in the universe. Right. And I'm like kind of baffled by like, like the the fact that it's like we never talk about any of that like when we're not on the radio and or trying to like do something you know like well, shows, like it, it seems like it was just like it really like frustrated me that we like had to like stop what we were doing like like it was like first Mariah wanted to talk not in the microphone yeah. over the, you know, what we were doing, like over this robot, but like, I, you know, dug out of wherever and God knows where and I freaking, you know, whatever. And so I, and then like, it, it was like, okay, so like after we just say like, hey, can you just talk into the microphone? It's like, okay, well now we have to spend like another, you know, however long, like talking about how we asked you to just, talking to the micro it's like it just like like the amount of time that we end up spending and energy and attention just like on you know something that could be handled in a different way it's like if you're like I don't know maybe I, a lot of people probably don't feel this way but like when I when I have like something that I'm trying to do I usually just like to try to like free do it and so it's it sort of like feels like the building is on fire and like I'm trying to get out but somebody's like standing in the doorway asking me like like where's the toilet paper or something like that and I'm like ah oh, well like, the building's so on fire and then like they're they're like okay well but why are you yelling at me though you know so it's like okay now I have to like spend all of this time like time like <laughs> talking to you about like this like completely normal reaction that I had to something to dead. When, like, all I want to do is just, like, do this thing that I should be able to, and you're keeping me from it. I don't know. It's just very frustrating. Totally. And that's, like, that's maybe, like, a, in part, like, a social media problem or, like, an identity. Because I feel like maybe you're, part of what you're saying, I feel like that's probably true, is, like, that stuff doesn't, like always come up in like as an intense of a way if we're just hanging out with M Mariah you know but she, I think she associates being on the radio or something like that with like this is my platform to talk about my message and to talk about like the power of spiritual awakening and Renewal. like combining but it's like okay, when you're completely ignoring the show that you're on and you're not wearing headphones and you're not, like, you're just talking about it's like, it's like you're just doing, you know, yeah, promo for yourself on our show, like, without, without caring about, it's like, what's your reason for being here, you know? And if, it, if that's what it is, then we're not going to necessarily want you to be there in Holy that context. Holy shit, dude. That movie rules. Oh, sorry. Wait, Stay what movie on topic. Is this? They, they had that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, they, they said that whatever music you listen to had a clip from my uh, cat eyes, which is this movie where this little troll tries to steal this little kid's breath and it's a cat that defends him. Oh, really? He doesn't King. like that. Yeah. Cat eyes. Chloe, it could never happen. Stephen King, three short stories. 
made it to one we, movie. Anyways, yeah, yeah that's sucks when somebody this. interrupts the show with like a completely off topic. Or, or if someone just talks off mic. And, and then like, like, you don't use Chloe's mic. No, you can't use Chloe's mic. Chloe's up. There's another mic. Yeah, you want to get on mic, her? No, And say your thoughts or have your outbursts. So, Are you wish we talking could to put my something mic? on the oh, mic and done so, yeah. I like it. Keep going. Please. I feel like we okay. can work with it, though. Like, I think that radio show actually came out, like, pretty great. And I felt that yeah. at the time. I know Herb was like, oh, this show sucks. And, like, and I know what that's like. It's, like, it's hard to be on radio with a, with a group of people. Yeah. And, like, if you have any kind of prerogative in your mind whatsoever of what you want to talk about or get over or whatever, it's, like, it's really, it's a difficult process to, like, learn how to work effectively with people and have good conversations and, like, give people a chance to, like, do something interesting and, like, I don't know. But he did. Best out Before of we didn't know he's doing better. And it, and it can and you can get upset and some and also you don't always know. You might feel like things went badly, or you know, and when you listen back, you realize that there's actually value to what goes on. And I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just like a reaction to just like feeling like she's being attacked all the time, which is like. I don't know, like, that's kind of, it's one of those her. things that, uh... I mean, I'm proud yeah. of her, because I listened to that one with Herb and Tyrone, and, like, you know, that like... She gave us the guy that her, that Herb, person. like, she does stay on... It's like, she's not full of bullshit at all. Like, she's mm. on point with a lot of oh, her stuff. I'm not, I'm not saying she's full of bullshit, but I, it seems to me that Mariah's simply processing that she feels attacked when people respond to her coming in and yelling super loud and interrupting them and talking over them. Yeah, like it seems like, her, like really it, it seems like she's having trouble recognizing that a lot of people like really a lot of people would react to that. We all want a license when you barge it into a place. Yeah, you barge into I a love place. It's my favorite thing to do and I never get to do the microphone. You know, you scare the shit out of somebody because it's like <laughs> My other microphone. And of course, like a lot of people are gonna are gonna react to that, you know, in a way where they're, you know, maybe um, maybe annoyed, maybe they get fed up, and then, you know, <laughs> a couple other them. adjectives for you know, yeah. And, and like, like if they, you start humping somebody's, you know, kangaroo head, but it, it but around, not, she didn't do that this angry. time though. She actually like oh. it seemed like she actually just wanted to have like a oh yeah yeah I'm not saying you know, no, like, yeah, and, yeah. and that's kind of like an improvement because like you you know. Yeah. Before it was like if you did that, then she would flip out and do a bunch of weird stuff. But it seemed like this time it was like she wanted to listen, you know, which is good. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so I don't know. I'm, you know, it's good that like I feel like she's kind of making improvements and like maybe genuinely curious about why, like like we were saying before about the the way that like people react to you, to you just like. Willing, you know, like, like. <laughs> Seems like the like, opposite of that. Either with like, like intense, intense, like hatred, or for no reason, or intense, like, like, you know. Yeah, dislike. No, or like, like a vessel. <laughs> Not like, love. Or they More like, than a person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so, I don't know. Like maybe she's just trying to figure out. Maybe she honestly just doesn't even know like why people react to her. You know, and, and she, like, wants to figure it out. Yeah, and I mean, I don't think she's, she's not coming from a negative place when she, like, is crazy and bursts and gets super loud and, like, talks over people. I don't think she's doing any of that purposely. I think she's doing it because she gets caught up in the moment. But I can also understand that, you know, I mean, to me, honestly, it has been annoying at certain times. And I've seen other people, you know, get angry in response, and I get that. I can understand why you would get angry. Because on, um, maybe for a future show on that CD, I finally dug out um, the recording of your set at PA's with the Slimy Monday thing. Oh, yeah? Right in the middle of your song, so it's like kicking me and screaming. Yeah. And you stop. That and is the thing. You kicked him and you goes, it was a love kick. And yeah. 
And then, like, in the mid, you're doing, like, a song by yourself. You know, Who's going to Aya? Yeah, I mean, the that's the kind of thing, like, that's the kind of thing, and, like, that was interesting to me, you know, Cause, and that's what I was saying, like, I think maybe everyone has to individually go on her show, and, like, because after that, I went on her show, but at the time that that happened, I was like, this is totally passive-aggressive, like, bullshit, well, when you, you see- know, because it was, like, stuff like that, with she would, like, do and I'm like this person like hates me but her like deal is like the power of positivity so she's not gonna like hate me in a in a direct way she's just gonna talk really loudly during my set of this fucking thing you were singing the greatest you changed the lyrics to fuck you in the middle of I yeah, I don't it's really like how can you not get that? I think she's self aware. I think she does have self. I think she's self aware because it's like she does her own show. She does it. It's organized. She controls it. It happens. You know, like it's not like we don't do that, and it's not like she comes in and does that. You know, like for us, we're but like on our show. We're it's all like her feeling out of control in her life. Yeah, I don't, I, maybe that's part of it. It's like, but she, like, basically knows what's happening, and she knows that she can talk about whatever she wants, whenever she wants, and that people will be respectful and listen to her on her show. But maybe on our show, she doesn't have that, and she thinks that if she wants to be heard, she needs to, like, yell, or, like, I don't know, like, I don't know, I don't, I kind of don't think that she has any self awareness because, like, when she she like it's like getting kicked out of the Middle East, and like the story that she tells oh, yeah, about she it is just story. like completely not anybody else's recollection of that story. What did she? What? Did, how did she say? It's like, well, and what happened? It was like I was just dancing. I was minding my own business. I was being quiet. And, and then you see the video. And, the ba- and I was dancing into the band. And then that, you know, that guy, you like at the bar, yeah. he, you know, the bartender, he, he just told me to leave. And then, and so I was like, fine, I'll just leave, I guess. And but then, like, like you talked to Rebo about it, and. You know, it's like a complete, you know, and it, and the way that she kind of absolves herself, I've noticed, of like, like people, you know, reacting to her negatively is she always calls them crazy. True, true. When, her, when her was reprimanding her for getting super loud on the, the last show. Which is the same know, night that she did kick down earlier that day. Like that. Her, no, like, crazy. Too. Wait, she called her a bitch? I think so. so. I think a lot of that didn't get recorded. Yeah. But I stuff. remember correctly, it seems like she kind of lays everything on her. And, throws her feet. and what was, what's that guy's name? In, the, nice, the, guy, the nice guy who's the bartender at the middle of the street with long hair. Oh, Rob? Yeah, he was, she was like, I don't know, he just went on and he just went crazy <laughs> on me. You know, like that, like. He, he just kind of does his job and smiles at people. He does get hit by Tyra. <laughs> yeah. Wait. So <laughs> wait. So what real? So what really happened? I don't know, like. She. I think what she was not that good. Well, I think it was, that it was like a lemonade and she was like hopping up and down. And yeah. she was screaming, and the band couldn't keep time or something, and they were like looking at Rob. They like, probably must have given her a warning. Saying, I can't think. Wait, did that happen? That they were looking at the band couldn't keep time. That's. I think that's what Rob Repo Rob told me. From what I remember, she was just Were you pretty there? loud. Yeah, it was like a restaurant in the afternoon. And the, I mean, the cool thing about the Middle East is they're like very tolerant of our shenanigans and good things we do over there. Yeah. But she was maybe just like a little. She was I know. Scary. Seeing the stuff from her own that topic, she was really loud. And so, like, maybe it was just the. And there's what? also, you know, there's there, like, during that there. time, there was also, like, oh, somebody know. in, like, in our, like, table group who wasn't paying their bill, and, like, it was all so complicated. Ends in eye row. Well, I mean, it, I don't know, like, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that she paid her bill, but I don't know if, like, they didn't know who wasn't paying their bill or whatever, so maybe there was, like, some doubt as to, like, whether she was actually paying for food when she ate there. 
and like also doing this, but which might not be your fault, you know, if it actually is does end in I don't know. Where where is T by the way? I don't know. Well, yeah, what like, weird? He does that thing where he goes away because um, the last time I talked to him was Saturday when I called into that show. And he goes, like, we're going to go to CCTV, and we're going to talk to Mike King Tuesday. Then he goes, I'll talk to you then, which is weird, because normally he calls me, he, like, checks in on me multiple times a day, but it seemed like he had a plan, like, I'm not going to talk to you till Tuesday, which I just thought that was weird that he said, I'll see you then, because normally it's like, call me later. Mm. Cause sometimes Did he, he go to Newport? I know maybe, he was talking about yeah, that. He was talking Have you guys about seen him? No, no, no. Silence. No. <laughs> I don't think um, Have you seen him? In your house? Like, we all just my noticed dad, we haven't seen him. <laughs> yesterday, my dad asked me if I opened the door at 8 in the morning, and I did not. Papa! So I, was, I assumed it was Tyrone. So I assumed that he was... Today. That was yesterday. Today, I haven't seen that or someone whose name ends in... And you didn't but see him. Or Doble, like, found your address. Morning, so I wouldn't have seen him at home. Hmm. I know. <laughs> so. Papa. I, know. I don't know. Most of the time, I hear him snoring, though, when I go to my room at night. But I don't remember. I mean... Not really like Papa, attention, are you okay? It's good to have a break yeah, from you, but just let us know if you're okay. I, I think that it's like soothing to my <laughs> dog to like hear him snoring. It's I think hey. that if he gives Keep him around. There, He's functional. <laughs> His ears work. He's like a white noise machine. My dog. He's, He's like a black noise machine. <laughs> oh we'll be right back. <laughs> Take a break and we'll be right back. <laughs> I, on that seat, oh, is that a real break with David? And we're back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny. Did you miss us? I don't. Because we missed you. Up top. Okay, I've got two segments here. Do you want to go into them? Two segments. Can I do one? Oh. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> if anyone <laughs> has insomnia out there, <laughs> listen hard to the next segment. <laughs> and you have the floor. <laughs> Chloe's going to put Chloe's settle in. So the segment I wanted to do, I just wanted to tell you guys. I got access recently to a very interesting part of the internet, which is a Facebook Deep group. Deep web, child uh, pornography, and hard yeah. drugs. Facebook group called Mung Shaman Sharing Vices. Oh. Now, Mung is an ethnic group. And vices. There are many Hmong refugees who live in the Ambo St. Paul area of Minnesota. They were featured in that movie, Grand Torino, with Clint Eastwood, mm-hmm. right? But people from Laos said they leave Laos for a bit of a secret war back in the 80s or whatever. But anyway, within that uh, community of people, there's like a shaman tradition where certain people who might be schizophrenic or... It, it's not to say they might... But certain people practice a shamanic tradition. Okay. So <laughs> I am like in a Facebook word, right? group where they ask for advice. Some people ask them for advice. And I just wanted to read a couple of quick things. So somebody says, what does it mean when you dream of catching a shiny white fish? And then another guy says... Getting money, go to see me. Wait, that's what the mung says? Is well, I'm not sure who here is a shaman. Uh, <laughs> so that's I don't want to use anybody's name. Like <laughs> Somebody else says, you could be pregnant. I had a dream of white pearl fish and found out that I was pregnant with my son. That was six years ago. That would be true. But and there's, one there's one more comment saying, if you caught it, means a white dragon visits you, or else it's one of your... And then it's a mung word that I don't understand. Quadi... Then you have a white dragon if you're a shaman. Or like someone said, a baby that has Kwa from Zaj Kev Chaz. So, some of I don't understand because I don't speak Mongol. But maybe we can do this segment again. I argue all of this, you don't understand. Maybe we can do this, everybody out there listening will understand. My dad claims that um, for like 10 years, that the same crow had been following him around. Same crow. Yeah, and I should ask him. I think David Spade has that same. 
Well, I looked it up online, and it's big in, like, oh, there's a whole Japanese forum of people going, like, yeah, a crow's been following That crow me. is following you. And it, it's Direct a Direct message your dad. We also have a thing where, um, some weird father-son bonding thing where I think it's bad if we see three crows. Like, how often we see three black crows. He has got a number ha- on you. I know. <laughs> He's like, I'm locking this one in for life. Oh, uh, yeah, the day. It's a whole I'd keep him in the basement, but I need to, like, dispel yeah. him so that and it's he a doesn't treat even for know him what he's doing. my basement. Yeah. <laughs> but this is, he hates to eat his tongue. locked in. He, <laughs> yeah. He did, like, yeah, I think my mom knows what she's doing with the attachment, but I think with my dad, it's all subconscious. But the other thing that reminds me of that he would hate for me to mention on the radio is that. He's so proud of thinking of the catchphrase, how many knees could a Negro grow if a Negro could grow knees? He's been saying it my whole life, and he'd always, like, say it in Maine, and then, like, my grandmother still treats me like I'm five, and my brain is hearing things, so, like, if my dad ever says anything negative, she'll be like, no, he's listening to you, so my, my dad would always start, how many knees could and my girl, we don't want them to know anything racial. So, like, he's just so proud of that, and about five years ago, like, I just typed into Google, how many knees could a Negro grow if a Negro could grow knees? And it's like a common thing kids think of. Like, it's the easiest thing to think of. Like, so many people had thought of this. And you still, oh, like, he thinks it's like his he invention? Thought, he thought of it. And that's what you're proud of. That's it's, interesting. And it was it's interesting because it is, like, a racial thing. Yeah, but, but it, makes it no has sense. nothing to do with race. Yeah. Right? You, you just, just want just to say sound And by word. interesting, I mean not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, you he know, was so not, crushed when I showed him like all these like Yahoo answers, like people go, anyone ever say how you use it? And when you're new, obviously there's no like stereotype for like black people. Well, they people. all have you three. They can all <laughs> how, That would be a amazing. How, how uninformed are you? I, I know. All three. Like maybe there could be a stereotype about so white people that have these like, two people. Oh, I'm not gonna hear any of that. What are the segments? Okay, so the segments are, there's two segments. One is um, weird things that I know, and we can all, we're all going to participate. And the other one we talked about last jar of time, Radio Cure, and it's called, Is This Spiritual? Oh. You want to get into that? Oh, I gotta, I gotta think of things. I gave away well, my two spiritual things last well, two weeks ago. Well, you can do... You can do a, yeah, do a recap okay. of what it was last week okay. that we were talking about. Is this spiritual? And then I'll, I'll, I'll give you my, yeah, my you um, data. Yeah, recap and an explanation well, of how these work. Well, I do say something that's kind of, like, spiritual. Because I never, like, I'm kind of... Like, don't always believe. All. I, I want to believe, like, oh, when I was a kid, I was so into... Oh, I did see a UFO, but that's beside the point. But when you just, like, believe any weird, mystical thing, like, I saw a penny on Tuesday, so I know it was my great-grandfather. But then, like, I kind of wish I was more childlike. It was the UFO that you saw. Yeah, this is bizarre. Well, this is another thing I told you, which is kind of a weird thing I know, is, yeah, the two pieces of footage I've been searching for. This was a Sunday... Afternoon, I was in fifth grade, I remember that, my friend Alex Metzger sleeping over, and there was this orange disc over a cow field, and it was there for hours, like, we were filming it, I brought my whole fame, my whole family saw this thing, we actually got sick of it, we were like, is the UFO still there? I have it on, like, my dad had a camcorder that was, like, new back then, I wasn't allowed to touch it, because I would break everything I touched, but when you saw there was a UFO, he let me touch it, somewhere there's a shaky footage. I want to see this I, video. I, I mean, it is a thing, even if it's not. I want some expert to tell me what it is. Then the other one is Will, me on Will Ferrell's lap as a baby. And then the third one, which I came is up with. Is that spiritual? No, this is weird things no. I know. That, uh, what, we're well, doing, Steve I me. gave you a choice. Steve he was talking me. about the spiritual. Well, yeah, I no, but he was asking me you're about the UFO. I, have not I was trying to make it flow. Okay. Oh, no, that's anti-flow. I just asked him about the UFO because that's interesting. Yeah, okay. Now I've opened that's that. not weird things you know. <laughs> it's called oh. answering Steve's question. All right, we, well, 
When you don't do a theme song for the segment, I'll know where it is. He asked you to recap and explain. All right, there was a UFO. All right, is this spiritual? Uh, my uncle Dave, RIP, he would. That's not. You don't even know what. This that's is not spiritual. weird. You don't even know what weird things I know is. So don't. <laughs> Like, I'll tell you what that segment is. You don't even know about that. That's so what are you, where? I said you weird things. Contact I your brain. I did an breathe into your, on the eye. Connect it to your body. And like, you know, stay in you. Well, and now the flow is you know, brain. You're all over the place. I, you're, I, like, I just you know? Well, I'm, you're, I mean, I know your family has done this to you, but I'm trying to rehabilitate you. You have I'm promise. You are my protege, but like these are the things uh, that we we need to work on. So, explain <laughs> what you know, which is is this spiritual? A I'm segment. Right. Recap and explain. My uncle, he would. Could you explain it in a voice as if you're Chloe the dog? Oh, my voice. uncle. <laughs> Would always think of great these ideas too. <laughs> weird words all the time. Probably doesn't sound like that. And, <laughs> and um, like he would always rub my aunt's face and say "gaja." We don't. We didn't question it. It just seemed like it made sense. And then I was such a fat baby. He would call me Boda, as in Buddha. And um, so yeah, I was born in March of nineteen eighty nine. Oh, it was called Boda. And then um, when Kurt Cobain killed himself in 94, I was out of my Boda phase in a regular way. He addressed his suicide note to Boda, which turns out that was the name he made up. Of his, Cobain did? Yeah, uh, just coincidentally of his imaginary childhood friend. That's who he wrote his suicide note to. Okay, okay, okay. okay. And so your uncle was not raised? No. I don't think anyone was till after he died. And then later I became seal. I don't know why. So was it that burn here, on your face? <laughs> yeah. Wait, say it again. Is the question here is this spirit? Exactly. Exactly. That's the question. That is the question. You can interpret it as spiritual, I guess. Yes or no. Could be random chance. Could be a psychic connection. But is that spiritual? Whatever it is, it's interesting. Interesting well, and just um, like a few weeks ago when I was in Maine with my aunt, um, she had just won $5,000 at a casino and she was thinking of, she wanted to just rent whatever we could, like a, cheap, a bounce house, anything to come into the house, and nothing would come to our town, and the first thing she opened up in the phone book was a place called Gaja Massage Parlor. Which is the thing he would say, my uncle would say when he rubbed my aunt's face. And I never heard the word Gaja before. Is that spiritual? And are those two events that occurred in my life together? I, and okay. the fact that he's dead and the thing happened. I think that is interesting. We're going to map this out. And I like that your uncle makes up silly words. But I also think it could be that when you make up a silly fake word. Silly? And you I don't mind. often see that word. You're going to notice it when you see it. Sure. So like ten years later, you remember your uncle saying "gaja," and then you're like, "Holy <laughs> shit!" I gotcha. said, like, "It's a restaurant, a massage parlor, and they like, wouldn't come to our house." Yeah. So there you have it. I don't think it's spiritual. Not spiritual. Uh, not spiritual <laughs> is the verdict from Andre. I think I would say. You know, I think that we're gonna map all these things out and hopefully eventually reveal new dimensions of reality and put some of this together. And I think that there is a spiritual aspect to that because even if you're calling that into your life somehow, like opening a phone book, you're not looking for that. You just have that in your implanted in your brain somehow. Yeah. And words actually carry a lot of Meaning, you know, it's like a word is something yeah. that's used over and over again. I'm always it's a portal into understanding, and See, it just, comes I, from somewhere. When I look at all this, like, you know, quote unquote magic stuff and spirituality, well, I, I see it more as like meaning interconnected. And yeah, like, a lot of times it's like, like different people, yeah. or different colors do uh, have what you might call a magical property. Like, my mom does that about her dad. 
Yeah. So a lot of people who are like mourning something, and like my mom's like, I always look at the clock when it ends in eleven. That's your grandfather, but I never like tell her look at the clock, and it's a lot of different mm -hmm. times. Yeah, some it's, people have a lot of stuff with that. Like they're always looking at the, but it's like even the power of your own mind in in being able to, if if you look at the clock at the same time every time and every time you look at the clock like Christiana told me once that she, every time she looked at a clock it would be the same number or the numbers added up to the same thing and she'd been noticing it a lot yeah, and it's like it's it is something I mean everything you experience to be true and perceive is something that's in communication with your mind you know nothing exists beyond or without your mind and your own observation even if you maybe think that it's just not the case you know your ruler creates the measurement you know but it's like we made up all this stuff you know it's so funny how we have like we have these phones with these fake numbers and it's like we could have imagined it that way to begin with yeah, thank but God we did it so first we had the rotary phone up. and we had all these things you know and it's like why don't we imagine it drastically different why are we imagining like we make a new phone that doesn't even have buttons but we have to make it look like it has buttons and we give it the same numbers and we we relate it to something else that works pretty much drastically different but like really, we have to fit it into that um, sort of paradigm or understanding that we already have. Yeah. But really, it's a screen that you can do a whole bunch of different stuff with. But you just transport that whole keypad thing onto your screen. I know it's key. I kind of miss the actual yeah. button. Well, anyway, wait, before we get into a rotary phone, we didn't hear the vote for Maddie or her. Of, is it spiritual? Yes. Okay. Two. You got a yes and you're, from her. And you're a yes. Uh, um, well, we gotta get a definitive. Well, I don't know if they heard this. Steve's a no. Well, I'm not retelling the story. Oh. Well, we can leave it an open so case. We can leave it an open so case. So, Maddie, right spiritual or not? Um, yeah, spiritual. I think got spiritual wins. All right. Okay. So the spirituals have it. Well, yeah, we have. About it. Well, the first one, first thing. <laughs> I've brought. That's a recap of this segment and an explanation of the segment. I'm so glad I okay. won That was a little bit longer, but <laughs> so for this week, this week's edition of is the spiritual, spiritual. I have some evidence for you guys. What? Of a potentially spiritual connection, and I'm gonna play it for you. Please do. You're gonna love it. Sounds spiritual to me. Guarantee it. Steven's Furniture. <laughs> brought to you by Ponytail. And Hawaiian Shirts for the Elderly. Uh -huh. Alright. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> when did you discover that? If it remember, I told you what I told. I was like, I have found. <laughs> oh yeah. <you> did. <laughs> and then, and, but it's like when you I do it. find something like that, then I can't tell you what it is, or else it would just destroy the whole thing. And then something happened where I couldn't find the fucking clip again. And we would have like never And it was driving me crazy. It. I know. And it's like there's so many um, Howard Stern YouTube the clips that I watch on the internet that I lost it, which I also feel, you know, it was spiritually spiritually heartbreaking that period of time. But luckily, 
I found it again. And now I know a little bit more about this situation. You know, what year is that from? Is that going to be the clue to whether it's... No, I just want to know, like, what... Well, I know it's Sal. <laughs> he says it so much. Good job. <laughs> and you're a man. Spiritually? It is amazing. And it's true, spiritually. So to add to this spiritual evidence, I have had a few dreams with Howard Stern. I have one especially clear dream of going to Barnes and Noble with Beth and Howard and like talking about stuff. I love, and in other news, the other segment that we're airing tonight is the eating on the radio. For those of you who can't eat, I know there's those of you out there who have your mouths wired shut for your eating disorder or for your medical disorder. So it's really one excuse to have a shape. I know that there are those of you that were born without mouths. And I know that we can help you. How can we help? Have you ever had tofu? I have. Through your wired, (laughs) shut braces? I should have heard that. Listen to the full Apparatus? Have you? For the audience, one lucky winner. No, we're trying to help the people. I like how they're trying to they overcompensate the while the they're drinking their tofu. Immensely. They listen to the chewing and it helps them. It's, it, it's like feeling like you are chewing even when you don't have that ability. Look how polite Chloe's being to that Yeah, right? she's very. Oh, she doesn't eat, like she what doesn't she understand like? what food. And then when she eats her food, like my mom puts her food in her bowl and she picks, she takes it in her mouth and then she walks over to the living room (laughs) and drop and drops it on the floor. No, like kibble, like drops it on the floor there and then eats it. No, it's just like a weird that like she that's to her that's like how you eat your food. Yeah, she also invented like how you play. Fetch like with a ball or whatever, I've and that, that and that includes. Well, our li- maybe our listeners have that. I've heard of fetch. Our listeners also don't know who we're talking about. We're talking about Joe's little sister. Yeah. She, well, interestingly, and perhaps because of the spiritual air waves and what happens, the interconnectivity of minds that we may or may not be aware of, we are talking about Chloe, the dog. In similar news, was it spiritual? Me, KKK, Tyrone Jones, and Sid Hart were playing soccer one day, yeah. night soccer in the EMF soccer field, and somebody that was laying down in the grass over on the side was saying into the dark, Jarba, like yeah. Jarba. And I was like, oh my God, I know this person. I was like, I wasn't wearing my glasses and like, and I was like, oh, hey, like, and then, and then she was just like, Jarva. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, oh, Willow, is that you? I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Yeah. And and then, like, me and Tyrone together walked over to this person. And as we approached Tyrone her. just like, we're making new friends. As, as we approached her, this girl who's yelling my name at me is like, Okay, you two, you both are coming up to me right now. This is really weird. And I'm like, I was like, oh, I was like, I just thought, are you saying? Okay, so Same she story. was saying Darbin. Darbin? But it sounded <laughs> exactly like Jarva, and that was the name of her dog that was running around. Yeah. We, so it was very, but then she kept yelling. She was like on the yeah, phone, but intermittently she'd yeah. yell, she'd be like, Jarva! <laughs> And you like it still it tricked Jordan. me. It still tricked me. It was Why? like the One weirdest game. thing. And I love that we freaked her out so much, like just coming over to her. But I could see how we would freak her out. But mm. she didn't know that she was like basically yelling at me to pay attention to her. And I was like, 
I'm here. Her name is Darth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, that, I know. That's probably the thing we're like, okay, before she was yelling the dog's name, but this time it's definitely Jarva. I might be a so dog was, somewhere. Was, was Darby? Not Darby? I mean, that's not even a name, right? Yeah, Darby. Uh, it's like angels in disguise. You can't you know, fool me. Darby. Derby O'Gill in Little People. She's like, I'm going to be about to come in there. The man shoot. There's a leprechaun. There's a, uh, there's a drinking contest. Uh, this other guy. He's not a leprechaun. <laughs> and who is? He relies on a lot of drunk. Is that spiritual, Stephen? Is that spiritual? Is that spiritual? Doesn't sound spiritual to me. Sounds like. Research that. Something is okay. Oh, but now that you played that Howard Stern clip, I got one for me. I'm gonna bring it next week. It's, I'll tell it to you off the air. I don't want to give anything away, but it just reminds me. We can keep the segment going. Yeah. <laughs> so are we supposed to bring up things that are like we're not sure if they're spiritual? Yeah. yeah. You just, just hit the nail on the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> this is a very self-explanatory no segment. Not quite like. What if it's like no? We can bear. We talk about weird things of I know. Breaks. A segment which Kenya does not know about. I know. Is a little bit more things. specific. I guess I keep the levels too low, but like yeah, when I don't, it's like me. everybody's yelling. I hear the room all the time. And I hate it, but. Maybe you just need to turn on the volume. Yeah, I mean, but I've tried that before, and it's like, it doesn't work. But I mean, these ones aren't so bad. I've had, I have really small ears. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something that I've experienced. That's like, true, but I don't think it's connected. I, possible, like that. sensitive. If we don't research it, why not? Sensitive. So nothing spiritual. It just reminds me of like, the, like sort of anomalies that I've experienced that I kind of like forget about. Yeah. So, like, I push them out of my mind. Yeah. See, that's and every because, now and again, maybe yeah. I remember them. So it's like a little bit nasty. The anomalies. Okay. It's hard that I saw them. Where does this fit in? By the time that um, a woman in Cambridge almost hit me with a car, or a truck, and then the cat held me out the window right afterward. <laughs> I was trying to remember what she said. Sexy ass over. She almost hit me with a car. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry. Didn't see her so And I was like, oh, you know, it's okay. And she said something like, you are too cute to die, or something. <laughs> and you and asked I was like, that. I nearly got killed by her. I remember oh, that story. What did you say to that? Were you like, oh, thank you? Oh, she drove away, so I just kind of like, I, 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 I laughed at how you know, silly it was, I guess. At the anomaly of it. And, then I, and then I thought about it, and I was like, oh, yeah. I'm going to say that was not spiritual. Well, this is called anomaly. Anomalistic or not. <laughs> We had something spiritual, something not. Oh, okay. Well, Me spiritual or not? One time I was I I was lucky enough to go to Morocco once, and mm -hmm. um, I was hanging out with a bunch of and um, right we away. paid some dudes to bring us in the Sahara Desert, and it was like cheaper than usual because they didn't really speak English and stuff like Portuguese. So, right. I spoke Hmong and. Uh, Stayed out, stayed there for night, and uh, there was a big sand dune, really tall sand dune, and so there was like moonlight, and I climbed up the sand dune. I'm like, I'm gonna go climb that sand dune. I'll be back at that, that sand dune. And so I went up, and the further I went up, the more like windy it became, and the more it was like a sandstorm, and I was like really kind of out there. It was beautiful desert and everything, moonlight, and uh, eventually I knew I didn't go all the way to the top. Eventually, it was like all this dust in my face. And, <laughs> and, then, and then I started rolling, like I, I started doing somersaults. Mm -hmm. you know, and it was a very amazing experience. And something very memorable and 
beautiful, but was it spiritual? Uh, well, you know what, I thought of, like, when Cunio came up with that title, and I'm like, you're like I don't know it. if it's a great title, like, but it's good to have as a, because I think what I'm more interested in is, like, um, I think that anybody can have spiritually profound moments with nature and the atmosphere that surrounds them and their own inner mind and creating an equilibrium or having, you know. Yeah. But it was like one of those rare experiences where in as much as I've ever felt something that I might describe as spiritual, like a particular kind of feeling of like witnessing the vastness of nature or something like that. Yeah. And I, I felt that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah, stronger I, than I have a good one. Yeah. I, this one's really weird though. It's uh, I, so I like went to this like teepee. Well, they were calling it a women's lodge. Wait. And I found like this, I went there because I, um, I saw this like ad for something that was like, it, it seemed like, um, they were going to teach, like, a seminar on how to, like, use your period blood to cast spells on people, and I thought it was really weird and funny. And so, <laughs> and so I went, I went I heard to this, that. Uh, I think that's be No, I, I, it's, that's a real thing, but this wasn't what that was, I just thought it was. But, uh -huh. so, so you were disappointed when yeah. you were out there? No, yeah, yeah I really was. Because uh, it had nothing, it had absolutely nothing to do with that, that, like, there was this ridiculous, like, um... I think it's weird or something, because it like, tastes like meat. Uh... Where'd you get this food from? Oh, I had it delivered. Do you, like, know what it is? That what white... What is tofu? I think that one's tofu. What is that, that stuff? Because I was eating it. It's, it's, uh... Yeah, I think you have fish, fish there. Yeah, it's fish and vegetables. Mm. That's you actually, can, that's really good. You can have most of this fish. tofu if you're in it. I was thinking I'd just have a, a little smidgen of tofu. Go so far. I love the connection of these segments, eating on the radio and the spiritual. It's eating, eating, eating on the radio. <laughs> so while you guys are eating on the radio, I should finish my story about this like, Yeah. But, oh, stop. So, yeah, I'm, I like walk up to the TV and there's like, this painting on the side of it that has like a woman's fake head on an ear of corn, like as her body. <laughs> and <laughs> that's like it's sort of what like them. signals to me that this is like a TV that I want. And kids are rubbing two things in the room. And um, so I go in, and there's just like this woman who's just like lying there. And like completely like motionless, like immobile. And then there are like these other two women who are there, um, who are like talking to each other. And I find out that there's like, you know, this like area in the middle of this TV that's like kind of blocked off, and it's got like a bunch of little paintings in it. And like the woman who was like lounging around, <laughs> like lying down on the ground she was doing that because she was having her period and these are the thing, like little pictures that she had painted with her period blood i've seen and period blood art yeah it's like very it's very brown for some yeah. reason yeah <laughs> well look, 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 like regular blood art i'm really participating in eating on the radio <laughs> choke it choke it it's choke it on the radio i choke all the time oh yeah do be but careful with that pork direct yeah, I, so. I did it twice. Because it's actually an animal, just like you. Uh, that, that's how I learned. Highly intelligent. Uh, <laughs> um, well, so, it, and then there was, like, this woman who was, like, posting this thing. And she, every time somebody new would come into the TV, and it actually, like, I was not expecting that many people to show up to this weird TV thing, but, like, a lot of people, like, we were kind of cramped in that TV. And, um, like, this woman was telling people to, like, watch out for the period blood because it was gross. She needs it for her. But, like, the whole point 
of like what I thought they might have been doing was like that. She, you know, it's not gross, but like she was like, oh, don't, don't, don't touch that, you know. And then. <laughs> How would you like to have someone mess with your paint? I want to play in it. <laughs> and then I don't know, it turned into something even weirder. <laughs> then that's the part you're not gonna. Talk well, it's about. like I haven't even really wrapped my mind around this like well, this incident, this like thing that I like witnessed. Well, and now's just, the like, time. Participating. It, well, it was weird because it was like they're they were like talking talking about how I don't know like you should when you have your period you should like sit in a fucking in a fucking GP. <laughs> For seven days, and it's, while it should like, be called a tea bleed, you, like 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 wood for your for your tea bead that you like stay in for seven days. That's what um you, I don't like they, it. I it was like I think it was, I would like, love like, Rastafari like, used to do that. Like I wasn't, you know. The Rastafarians are so obsessed and terrified of periods that women can't cook on their periods and they have to just go live in the woods for a week. Yeah, that's the people are so disappointed because it has such a great image with the reggae and the weed. People don't want to believe about the anti-period Rastafari. Yeah, and I like she was also saying that birth control was like like a thing that was like something that was like. Create, created by the patriarchy to like control of body. Blame the patriarchy. Yeah, but like I feel like I don't like there is a lot of freedom and like that comes with like not having a bunch of screaming babies like <laughs> like attached to you and patriarchy thought like being a parasite to you. <laughs> <laughs> Could she see your side of the argument? So with that spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with this new word I learned today, anomaly. And so anomaly. <laughs> We're gonna have to review that one. <laughs> yeah, We're gonna, that's gonna be an open This is the case. first tie on is the spiritual. Because <laughs> <laughs> There was so much in that. Did you have your period at the time? No. No. So maybe maybe if I did, it would have um, meant more to me. But could have done a painting. Vagina doctor. And I, I was kind of, like, got mad at them. Because, like, they were telling all this, these, like, women who were like, oh, you're wearing, like, this, like, hat with fake antlers on it. <laughs> so, like, you must know what you're talking <laughs> This whole thing is so vague. Like, you just started with, like, I went to a teepee. <laughs> yeah. so, I don't I even know what see, question I to just start see, like, with. a Native American on the side of, like, where like, can the you drop everything? Beach with, like, yours. period paintings and, like, no, she's, like, laying like, on the ground. Where did you <laughs> There's so Absolutely. much to go. Over. Well, I don't see white people, so that's my, <laughs> that's my other condition. <laughs> you mean I foreskins? foreskins <laughs> that's what I see white people as. I have full foreskins, and like all I had to make my wallets with was just a. Um, We're healthier so without them. That's yeah. what I said. Like weird blood paintings on them. So how long? How long did you stay at this place? <laughs> I, I hope that, like, our, like, you know, period native friends are listening. You know, sequel show makes, like, a cool thing about this. I just I like really broads. Yeah, no, they, I don't think that they would. I don't, I don't, I think that, like, it would make them feel like them? Yeah. Did you tell them, like, what city you took place in? Yeah, I want to maybe know. Maybe you should. No. It's better if you don't know. What, what do you mean? You I can't know. Now I want to. Yeah. Oh. It could have happened. Anyway. And now I'm going to be thinking it about it. It could happen to you. Yeah. Before you go into but, the And that's the thing. is, like I was like trying to get, I was really trying to get people to go with me to this thing. And I kind of felt like it should just be women because of the nature of like how, you know, like if you don't come prepared to class with like a vagina, 
like in in a class that I thought was going to teach me how to like like do magic spells or draw on my vagina. Um, There's got to be a class out there for you. Like, yeah, I mean, maybe you're not really invited, but so I, nobody <laughs> would, and so I just like had this weird experience where I had no idea what was going on, and I couldn't, I like couldn't even like. I remember, yeah, like I remember I came back from that, and I was, I somebody asked me how it was, and I was just like, I don't even fucking know what happened. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> but so like you sound like you stayed for the full. Well, yeah, I did. I was like, I, I was so confused by what was going on that I did. I did stay for the whole thing because I thought that like it was like made it so clear to me. How long was like it? Like the point of this? It was. A, it, I was there for a while. Like a week? While? No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like maybe like a couple of hours. No, no, I thought you seemed so mad, like you had to move in or. Something. No, but I did, I don't know. And like, the, <laughs> it, get, it really does get weird. There, there, the one of the women who was, um, not the one with the fake antlers, but the other one, she wasn't wearing a shirt, and she, her nipples were just like very, like, askew. <laughs> <laughs> It was Always like the really people on the show. It was so distracting, and I was really like making, trying to make like an honest effort not to stare it's at. Probably her like, glory. They were like, it was like a cross-eyed. <laughs> 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 and I, you know, I didn't want to you know, be rude or anything, but uh, it really, it was almost like it mesmerized me, <laughs> like the way that made it. Maybe that was part of the yeah. program. Yeah, but that was, was like, flattered. here's how I do my sub seminar. I'm nipple tizing. <laughs> how to hypnotize. Yeah, see, so you found something you liked about <laughs> Did you paint with other people's period blood? No, because they were, I, I don't know why they did that, because it seemed like they were actually genuinely afraid of it. Like being in the middle of the room, or like being or was that sorry, spiritual? Too. I think it was. What you know what I'm talking about, right? Possibly spiritual. Yeah. What, what if you said? Did you say that I was kind of afraid. afraid? Yeah. No, you did that before, like a minute ago too. Yeah. Or no, she said like I was so confused, and you said that I was so confused. So like are are just like coincidences, or are these like the spiritual profound coincidences? Mm -hmm. Maybe we're going to have to retitle the second. This has nothing, One like, the story has nothing to do with anything man else that's ever happened to me in my entire life. It's like the opposite of the community. Well, I a coincidence can be a once-in-a-lifetime <laughs> thing. I just want to know, like, the story like you read about this online like and why are you so why is this such a soft spot like you gave away but all this like don't ask where it was how I found out about it that's the where the weird well because it's a better story I guess you're just when like you know, where did you find this weird fucking like teepee <laughs> Yeah, okay. well, because I want to live Where, that kind like, of life. The I idea that you could, like, stumble on something like this. You know what I mean? Like, because things hilarious. take in place in different places at different times. You might put them in the box. It might be better if you don't know where it happened. Uh, okay. <laughs> now that's spiritual. Uh, I never seen you know, it. I wasn't, I didn't go out, like, did you end up in the right place at the right time? <laughs> and like, are these people there all the time? Like, it was like, are they doing it right now? It's yeah, it's like a, uh, it was, well, it's like an omnipresent kind of thing. Maybe they were all spirits, and it was like, oh, that's spiritual. When like, when like the bar is like full of people, but it's just Jack Nicholson like being right. crazy in, in an old hotel by himself. Are you that talking about me? Yeah, you heard that. It was just Jarva being crazy in an old hotel by herself. In yeah. black and white, it's most somehow. of my childhood. <laughs> Scared yes. Shelley Duvall. Every time. At the reunions. 
Oh. Yeah, but you can just see. We should try to get you as you go. Well, she is. She, um. Well, I just heard Bill Burr talking about how, um, Shelly did the fall she was on Dr. Phil, and Dr. Phil was kind of just exploiting her. She, she, like, believes Robin Williams is still alive and the world is flat and stuff. And they kind of... Yeah, and now they just kind of make fun of her in the Inquirer when their other stories go. Like, she lives in a trailer and it was bad now. Are you Shelly Duvall alone? Okay. If you want Robin, and the same with Coco, they told Coco Robin Williams was dead. Like, I believe Coco alone. Coco, Coco should alive. not be ignorant. Yeah. But it's Coco important. Face really. But who's I, Coco gonna tell? Is cat? I was working at a golf club today, and I thought Coco the gorilla. Coco killed this cat. Really. Sometimes, like when you, <laughs> most of the time working at golf clubs is fucking horrible. They covered it up. But every once in a while, there's like this kid who's like trying to pretend to be so normal. Coco. But he Coco knows is... literally all there is to know about Coco the gorilla and will speak very quietly with you about it so other people can't hear him. Awesome. You met yeah. KKK at a golf club? Well, I'm <laughs> louder, but yeah. No, it was like a guy who said he, his job was to go to different <laughs> yeah, guests by setting up um, like. Louder now that I've got three radio shows. That was his whole reason for being there for that long that day talking to So like he didn't want other people to hear the Coco, but he knew you. Can you guys tell me all your collective knowledge of Coco the Gorilla? I don't know where to start with Coco. I don't know. I have so many mixed feelings. How about um we go into weird things? That I know, yeah. Yeah, which I mean, may be a very brief seg go. segment, because I don't know if you guys have any weird things that you know in this vein, because I just thought of this okay. segment the other day. Okay. And the segment is weird <laughs> things <laughs> that you know from your life experience that are, like, very specific. And you're not sure if, like, putting them out there, if they're they're going to help people. You know they could help people mm -hmm. in some way. But it's just, like, a very, a very slight thing that you have noticed. And it circles back to our thing of breaking things, which I wanted to mention. You say you like breaking anything. But do you like breaking things that are of high value to you personally? Because that's some that was what Tim Garza did, and oh one time when Frank Zoid's iPad tablet yeah. got a crack in the glass, his response to that was to completely smash the entire thing. Oh, uh, yeah. I just meant like, no, I get devastated when yeah things break. I just meant like that's what I thought. the act of smashing. Like when Dave Letterman would throw things off the roof, I love that. And Benny yeah. and Banjo watch those clips. What about them? The ultimate metaphor. Good video. BB be gun. Well, only only a, only the dreams of an old man like you would live in a snow globe. <laughs> <laughs> snow globes mean nothing to me because I, I was born in the age of television. <laughs> <laughs> I put myself in a snow globe and tried to sell it on eBay, and I said Check I was out. the, um, well, I bought, it was 90% off after Christmas, and they had, like, a snow globe where you put your own picture in there, and it was when my hair was pink and short, and there's a Polaroid. And I was high value. I know. I knew people yeah. wanted me. I was high. For Christmas? No. Well, this is a thing, so I put it Remember in there, it was a Polaroid, so I just put it in there, and then, like, my dad and girlfriend was saying, you look a lot like the Batman shooter, which I got a lot. You know, the guy who went into the theater? Yeah. I thought he was the Joker. So I put it on eBay and said, I don't condone what he did, but this is a very rare memorabilia of James Holmes, the Batman murderer, and put it for like a dollar. And I did get a lot of watches, but I got a letter from eBay saying, um, 
you can't sell anything uh, marketing a tragedy or a murderer within the last 100 years, but then they wrote parentheses. For example, something like something used by Jack the Ripper would be okay. And that was just yeah, a standard like, letter. You know, there's an arcade game uh, of the Titanic. Mm, 1912, it's past. <laughs> Sell it all. But that was actually, they definitely released that before the Omni Dew mark, I think. Mm, well, not like the day they did. That's older than 2012. I saw that because arcades have all shut down. Back in my day, there were <laughs> arcade games. <laughs> Titanic games. We were just like, at the most fun arcade right. game in the world. We got a figurine. But what, what's the weird thing? It's very off topic. topic. Um, so, circling back to safely breaking things, which is enjoyable, and doesn't have the after sting of breaking your prized possession. Right. I like to redeem cans and bottles, like you were talking about. And the fucking, whatever it's called, what's that place called? Blanchard's. The one over here in Austin is pretty good. For that, because they're, they're like glass bottle thing, you gotta like throw the glass at the back of the thing, and it's like it's really nice. I recommend it to people. But from redeeming cans and bottles and whatever plastic that's the other one um, I have learned something. Because, you know, you put some cans in, depending on the place that you're at, like, it won't accept certain cans. Some things are never accepted, so you learn pretty quickly the things that are, like, never accepted. Yeah. But Heineken, Heineken glass bottles will trick you into thinking that they're not accepted, even though they're pretty much universally accepted at any of these redeeming centers. But there's something with the way that they print their barcodes on the bottle that you've got to do it several times. And if it's not working, turn the bottle the other way and do it that way. And I guarantee you, if you do it, you know, two or three times, try it differently if you did it one way, it will be redeemed. That's a big part of my bullshit job is telling people Is that it important to tell people every- that? No, there's bending. They have that at my I'm, place. I house. think about it. I'm like, am I the only person? Like, I know other people must know this, but I know other people must not. Do you know there used to be like not ads. redeemable. <laughs> Redeem <laughs> and prosper. Yeah. You ever see those YouTube? Like, they changed a lot of properties, but there used to be like ways that you could give you free pop, free soda. <laughs> they I called it pop. Pop. I never encountered one that did that, but I used to work at a library in the basement. Soda, and they did have a machine where you could press certain phones and they like, tell you how much money is in there. Just in case you wanted to rob it. You know, like that. You're playing mm. pop. Mm. They tell you how much of each. You could always go with a blind A6. Yeah. Blind A6. Don't get me started on that. Go, go, go! Is it your main machine order? Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, A6. Give me that cheese net. No, but at my bullshit job, I have to do that every day because there's a big beaming thing, and then you have to put a reskin barcode. Oh, these look frust- at that. Spiritual. I know these, like, people, it's always these, like, people, like, I've been doing it over, and they get so embarrassed when I just turn the barcode over and put it in, but I'm so used to doing it. They go, oh my, <laughs> look at that. Oh, that. And, like, they just want to have, like, a big conversation and, and I go it's fun thank you so much I'm, I'm here I'm putting the thing in but I didn't you know it. it's like really disappointing though like when you want to have like a big conversation with somebody about how much you appreciate like and you know it, that they're able to like put the bottle in the hole correctly yeah and that person is just like such a celebrity that they that's who that they become. don't want to have that conversation with you they're just like uh-huh, uh-huh. and then they walk away <laughs> Yeah, I, I know. I try not to do that, but <laughs> you need to make time for your fans. I know, I know. There's this one Asian lady, like she can't even get the word "thank you" out, but she is just she loves like like she can only say like "sanka" and she she gets excited when she sees me because um they banned her from every redemption center like. Within miles and miles, and everyone who works there is so mean to her. Like that goddamn Asian lady's here. She's here all day, which who cares if she's there all day? 
So she, like, comes in every day with these giant trash bags and spends the day there, and I usually have to fix the machine for her, and then, like, when she sees, she <laughs> it sounds like I'm doing like, the worst stereotype, but she literally is tiny. Goes, Senka, Senka, Senka! And I'm just kind of, and I try and be modest, but people are so mean to this lady. Like, why would it bother you that a lady's using a machine? I don't get it. And people are like saying, like, they ban that goddamn lady everywhere. They should ban her here, too. Is that a weird thing that you know? It's it's a mean no. thing, I know. No. It's, it is kind of weird. It's cause thinking, like, she must not be able to get a job, because, like, if she worked that hard at anything Nobody else, redeems cans in Little Town? <laughs> well, they can't, because she's hogging it up. <laughs> <laughs> So, chew on that. Maybe <laughs> move out of your small town <laughs> racist community. I agree. I, there are a ton of Asian people in active. I guess some people have problems with that. We've redeemed cans that my mom does at this guy like, that has this place of business. He pays you what you get for a can, and he just has this big room, like, storage unit type place with no windows that's just com just gigantic plastic bags full of cans. And I'm like, what Please does like he do? And he room? pays you exactly what you get for redeeming a can. So I'm like, huh. what? He's got to be sending these cans to California or something. You know, some place where you get 10 cents versus 5 cents. Or, or like, I mean, that's got to be what he's never doing. Saw, you never, because I've never seen this as a business anywhere else, so but it is in Norwalk. I'll bring you there. Maybe we could bring that Asian woman from your community there and see if. Oh, well, I know. One time, I had to like she, the machine was out of order, and like I had to explain it to her. It was one of the saddest days of my life. Like. She couldn't do her thing, and like she doesn't know like a single. I could. I was like, no, and she was banging. <laughs> it was. Oh, it was like giving a child away or something. I could just go. Like, it's not working today. It really affected me. <laughs> like I couldn't. Like there were like five people trying to tell her that it didn't work, and she was in denial. It was like I don't know. It was like telling someone like their wife was dead or something yeah. that the machine is not going to work today. So I don't know if I'd be able to communicate. Come to the radio station. We'd all have to. Well, I'd have to learn some what? Chinese or something. Nobody said come to the radio station. You said station. maybe we'll talk I to I said we that. can bring her to the can guy oh. in Norwell and you can right. apprentice her. This is what I'm talking about <laughs> with your, what? your uh, neurology. Yeah. Let's yeah. The show. Well, I actually can't I'm the sure show she now. would love that. You said she can't speak English. She can you almost... said she just wants to redeem cans. Yeah. yeah. You said she's attacked by white people all day. Let's bring yeah. her in. No, she you know loves. What? She loves me. Though. I bet like she wants to. We'll get through to her. We'll sign language. Saying. Maybe we'll just touch her sign to language. communicate. Yeah. You know. That's what I'm saying. That's a perfect solution. <laughs> I did it based on a translator. It's a real think tank in here. Yeah. So now you care about Asian people, eh, Carla? <laughs> I so have here, always cared about Asian about people. The barbershop and community. I don't. I didn't understand that was Asian. I didn't really uh, understand any of that. That is such an. I that. did not understand this. <laughs> I, understand I heard you say awesome. Oriental. Oh yeah. That's... I didn't miss that. Black bag. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a monkey book. I've heard of mung beans, and I, I'm supposed to be eating them. Pikachu told me that. I haven't yeah. purchased them yet, but apparently you can get them at the Indian store. But also, I know you can get them fresh at the at H Mart, but I've been told to buy them dry. I don't know. I haven't gotten them. You gotta get that dry what do you do them after? When they're dry, do you, like, when you wet them? Yeah, you <laughs> wet them. I've always failed at that. Every time. Oh, they yeah, say it's I, easy, and yeah. it's not easy for no, me. No, I fucked that up once, too, because <clears throat> but I, I didn't realize how, like, big, big they get when you soak them in water overnight, so I always, like, make too much, or I, one time I put it 
This was a huge mess. I put it, I put like my beans in, in like a mason jar, and then I added the water, and um, the beans just kind of like expanded in this jar, like, and just packed themselves so tightly inside the jar that I couldn't even, I would, I like took a knife and I was trying to like get the beans out and it, they weren't, they wouldn't come out. Like even stabbing them. <laughs> they wouldn't you come out. Oh, okay. I couldn't get them out, no. You couldn't then, just put a spoon in and have them No, because they were uncooked beans, like they were hard beans. Oh, no. That like fused together in this jar. <laughs> What a horrible way to start your you can, day. You can really fuck that up. Not. Who knew? Yeah, most people don't know that you can fuck that Is up. Is that cheap, Mary? <laughs> Did you recognize a friend? No way. Was that a spiritual message from the voice? I believe it was a 1980 way it was. A spiritual message from a young cheap, Mary, and possibly. Sounded like cheap, okay. Mary, and then we'll be born. <laughs> Where he steps out of his rule is the right about that. They won't let him back in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We get a lot of sounds going in the background. Sometimes the sounds remind me of things. Sometimes it might be a Cheech Marin sound. I or thought I heard sound. Cheech too. I think you're right. It's like floating in an, an auditory sea of sound. Is it spiritual? Anyway, is it spiritual? Is it a bit weird? Yes. It's spiritual. <laughs> and we have it, at <laughs> least the most skeptic of all spirits. I know, you can crack speed. Stephen is now spiritually confirmed. Brought to you by the one, the only, the cure. Coca-Cola. It's not Coke. <laughs> it's Coca-Cola. But it'll make you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> Sugar is worse than cocaine. True uh, fact. Is it true? For your body, for your mind. <laughs> yeah. Gasoline is good shampoo. Uh, are you just testing it? Have you put mayonnaise in your ear before? My grandmother did that to me once. Mayonnaise is vegan. What's so, I don't no, know. Mayonnaise is not vegan. <gasps> Throw oh, up everything. Damn it. She, she barged into me in the shower and started putting mayonnaise in my hair. She denies this ever happened. <laughs> and I was like way too old for so it to be happening, like, too. Like, does that get qualified as like a molestation? If like, if it happens uh, and then. I don't know. Or... There's so many borderline molestations. I, what, what was, like, the purpose of putting mayonnaise I don't know. I was so trying to fend it off. Like, I didn't even listen to her. I was, like, so in shock. <laughs> like, it was so weird. And she, well, remember, so she, why did you think she had, had, like... Would have ever put well, I want to know if that's, like, a good thing <laughs> people... Because I know nothing about, like, a lot of things. So I wonder if that was, like, a thing people know. Like, if it's com I never know if things are common knowledge or just weird things. My family thinks of. So I was hoping, like, you'd be like, oh yeah, Nanny's here is really good. But, yeah, I do that. No, I do that like once a month, eating Chloe. It gets really good. You can go get it for like 99 cents if you level up. And it's better than shampoo. That's what I was hoping I'd hear. But instead, I'm learning facts about Coca Cola. I think they allegedly had some. They know what they did. There are. There's a lot of Coca-Cola commercials. The new one coming out very soon. Reclaim the truth. Reclaim new America. Disbelieve in the propaganda of Coca-Cola. Little things that will reclaim the truth. Uh, it will cure you. Coke light. 
Thank you all for being here. <laughs> Chloe, you got the last grunt. Chloe. We'll see you again. We're going to leave you with a beautiful, beautiful song. It's a folk song. all you gotta do, and that's how they make coke. New America. New America. This guy is still going on about There we go. God damn it. This is what I'm going to hear when I'm slowly dying. Chloe was so good. It just sits there and loves and doesn't do anything. Uh, what is this? I would have loved to hear a grunt or two. Or like any kind of dance. You know, like any kind of like nipping at somebody. I or just running around. Or barking. Or say, that's it just virtual. Sits, it just sits. <laughs> It doesn't do anything to piss you off. Hey, Herb. <laughs> I want to make it so you guys can hear this. I've heard this. Who wrote this song? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mountain Dew. <laughs> Get you fill up my jug with that good old Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. <laughs> see, you see that, that Daniel Johnson documentary with his 
in the Met Institution and used to dress as a Mountain Dew and kept writing jingles for him. Grandpa. We drink Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew is Dew. awesome. I mean, what? I, used to, I used to drink a lot of Mountain Dew. It's <laughs> fucking great. It's terrible for you. But for your mind, it's wonderful. And <laughs> you're glad it's, you did all really your Mountain Dew in your youth? Like that, man. Mm-hmm. Where's her? Yeah, so like, that's why I'm on seltzer water now. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure. Okay, so I put. I put the auto DJ on, I press play, and then I turn lock talk off. So you know what happened is that and back to the video is to shout eight. Oh, that's it. That interview is the guy that turned my life around. Yeah, yeah, I turned it off, but then I was like, I don't think it's worked yet. So. Oh, she turned that off. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Chloe, you were great. Chloe, stop. It just, it just sits there and doesn't even bother anyone. She's what a, is it? She's very It's polite. called dog. No. It's called not. perfection. <laughs> In animal form. You need it. In order to have a meaningful relationship with an animal, it needs to piss you off so much that you think about bringing animal. <laughs> Never have. Always getting excited. She's like, yeah, you just feel bad for any time I don't bring Chloe with me anywhere. I feel bad, and any time I don't walk her like three times a day and do all her favorite things and hug her for hours, I feel bad. <laughs> and she never complains, but I just, I feel so bad. I'm like, you have, like, you got to, like, get a crit. Because I'm like, because, like, if she gets excited, like, because I'm putting my shoes on and stuff, and it's like, we're going to go out and play. Like, she's just so, like, happy. Yeah. And I hate not walking her when I, like, can't and when I don't have time. I'm like, there's no such thing as there's no time for Chloe. And it's true. I mean, because it's time for both of us. It's good for both of us. But she's just so good. I I never thought I'd be I know. Like, the shape of her face. Like very deceptive. You ever do you just play with yeah, her ears all like day? All day long. Her first on the best day. Have, like the shape of her face is kind of like a shovel, but like if you like, like really like the most beautiful it. shovel. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. But if you grab <laughs> onto it, you that. know that it's not that shape at all. And you're like, I wouldn't it's use you to dig it. It's the shape of an angel. <laughs> But an angel that lies. She does have a voice. <laughs> <laughs> that lies. Yeah. Then what did you lie about? Like you, you ha- you're convinced that the, her face is shaped in one direction. But she lies by her face. You can admit that close. You see? Yeah. Her heart door. Oh. I wish the game. <laughs> Not again. I mean, we're so close to break word. <laughs> I won. <laughs> you don't have to pretend to like baseball. <laughs> I must call it. I don't even like baseball. You do have to pretend to like your halter, though, because you gotta wear it when you go out. And she doesn't really love I mean, she puts it on. But she's like, my mom was like, stand up. <laughs> That's what we do when we try and put. I don't think she understands that or stand. 
<laughs> but she does her best. She just puts her head down for everything. So like it's a little evasive when it comes to the halter. I didn't even talk about that. She plays fetch. People are gonna love that. Well, maybe she can come back. Yeah. She's gonna come back. You wanna help so did she go to Maine with you now? I think, uh, no. Where was she? I'm like, what the fuck? Who she was, she goes she to get this woman's no, no, I mean, he is not house. <laughs> I wasn't referencing that. Um, I was pointing at the thing. Takes care of her. Wait, I did sign in. Make sure I always log out of your account. Don't know when the next imposter is going to sign. Can I see your feelings, journal? Yeah, we didn't even get into that. I know, I remember. I like a pain. And then I have places in my mind where I want to go. And I think I should read on the air, because I don't even think I take this. I have one. What were you saying? Um, that I think, like, I don't even mention her name. Like, I keep going this particular medium. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't even, like, this. I got very, very poetic with it. But, yeah, I think there's a page I left there. I remember, a particular I remember medium. referencing the Lucy. Out of, of all of the mediums I know. I know. This is a good one. I know. I know. <laughs> A meeting. I don't want a meeting. Oh, and yeah, I put Oh, she looks like she's smiling. No, I don't want a meeting. Is this how it's supposed to go? We're kind of like trying to be with you. But <laughs> now she wants to talk. What were you saying? Um. I don't even know. Oh. Oh, I don't know. I think I was just trying to go with some. Trying to search for a joke and answer it. But you don't know what I'm not There's a lot of me. That's good. But I think it would have a, be a good radio show to have my mom and Mariah discussing it like over here today. Oh my god, that would be weird. Did like, you I, tell your mom about it? No. That's why I kind of wanted to be surprised. Yeah, maybe she would be so shocked if you tried to call her in. Because I know she loves him, right? She'd probably take her side, like, well, maybe you should ask her if she would date. Hell, don't judge me. She just, she just likes you. And I like you, too. God, I hate that. My mom does like, when... Somebody like says something rude to me, and I'm like, what? Like I, I tell them that it's rude, and my mom's like, oh well, you should just be polite because okay, they just like you. I know you. Be lucky anyone <laughs> acknowledging your presence. Well. You're no spring chicken. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you got your father's chin. I, I, <laughs> I, I like your father. You got chin. But Jen is just not, it doesn't look good on a woman, you know? <laughs> on him? Sure. On him, sure. Oh, we gotta get her saying that. <laughs> Maybe she'll back down, like, well, what'd you say about my shit? I never said it. This is the first. Oh, you're free to go. She's like, no, what's the reward? Yeah, I kind of hate Chloe. You hate Chloe? Yeah, I I know, it's just a 
Yeah. Fuck you. Download the videos from um, the Facebook Live videos yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Can you do that so we can put them on YouTube and make them YouTube page? Okay. Because that's important. Yeah. 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 It's crazy that the social connection is after show. Yeah. I think it's too crazy. And we don't. Like, that would make any sense. I think you think the real show would have. Uh, yeah, you would. Making out. Definitely. What should be on the app? I, I the show, but what else? What the hell is that? Dress up on direct. Dress up on direct. What? I know. I don't know a lot about that. It can also be a stopwatch. Like, they can do everything. Like, take it. How can you masturbate effectively when you're like kind of passing out? Huh? How can you masturbate effectively when you're like kind of passing out for being a Oh man.